And now, it's time for the Freedom Fiends Agenda live call-in show. Have you swallowed too much of the state's poison? The Freedom Fiends will stick their fingers down your throat and hold your hair back while you hurl. Call in before they get droned, right now, live on Freedom Fiends Radio. Admit it. You hate shopping for Christmas. You do. It's a hassle coupled with a burden, mechanically checking off friends, relatives, and coworkers from your list. You're probably not even religious, but if you are, is buying your cousin some little made-in-China piece of plastic really celebrating the birth of your Savior? This holiday season, why buy gifts for friends and relatives? Most of them are status anyway. You should send that money to the Freedom Fiends instead. The Freedom Fiends will use your money to help spread education of horizontal liberation throughout the world. If you want to help provide inoculation from indoctrination, go to freedomfiends.com and click on the spinning coin on any post to send your money to the Fiends instead. Because buying crap for unappreciative statist relatives won't get your name on the golden floppy disk of redemption. And if you must shop for Christmas, please do it through the Freedom Fiends Amazon link over on the right side of freedomfiends.com. It won't cost you anything extra, and Amazon will save you the danger of holiday drive-by stabbings at your local mall. Amazon pretty much sells everything you can buy on this earth, except for guns and weed. But they do sell the DVD, Guns and Weed, The Road to Freedom. So get that for your gun-hating stoner brother or neocon gun nut dad. They'll thank you for it. That's freedomfiends.com. Yeah. All right. Welcome, fiends. This Nima. is your boy, Nima. Nima Fiend. Nima How you doing, Fiend. Nima? How you doing? Ah, I'm doing fine, man. I'm doing fine. Actually, I'm not, but uh, I'm going to pretend for the folks in Radio Land. Yes, I am doing fine, folks in Radio Land. Does Christmas shopping have you down? You know, Christmas shopping hasn't been so bad, actually. Uh, we've only been once, so I'm sure it'll get worse and worse. But Any uh, drive-by stabbings? <laughs> there was an attempted at drive-by stabbing, but um, I, I held my own, as I tend to do. You held your mud? My mud? That means you didn't poop yourself. Ah, okay. Yes, I did not poop myself. Uh, not that time, at least. But uh, no, everything's been fine. You haven't been doing any Christmas shopping other than online or at all. What's up? No, people should do Christmas shopping through the Fiend's Amazon link, and then they don't have to leave the house. Ah, uh-huh. yeah, yeah. 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 I don't know. I think there's one good thing about leaving the house to Christmas shop, and that's that, uh, I don't know, if, if there's somebody you don't know what the hell to buy them for, um, sometimes it can be nice to walk around the mall or some kind of place like that and see if there's just something that you didn't think of, you know, cause everybody's out there trying to hawk their wares. So it's like, <laughs> it's like going to a place where people are going to pitch to you. So if you're cool with that, it's cool. I'm not. You're I hate not? Christmas. I'm, I'm a deist, but I get pretty close to atheist at Christmas. <laughs> um, Really? Why? Which is kind of like saying, you know, I used to say I'm a minarchist before my coffee and an anarchist after my coffee. I mean, you either are or you aren't. But Yeah, but eventually you became an anarchist. So does does yeah. this mean eventually you'll be an atheist? I doubt it because deism, if I were an agnostic, that would probably be true. Like agnosticism is to minarchy what uh, atheism is to anarchy. Uh, I, 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 right. wouldn't, I wouldn't make that analogy because the thing about ag- being agnostic is – you just place a low priority on it or yeah. you understand that you will never know. And so why try? I feel like minarchy, um, you are taking a principled stand. Your principles are just different than anarchy. Your principles are just unprincipled. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> well, you know, it's kind of that thing of like uh, what Larkin Rose said where, you know, he was a minarchist for years and he'd make all these minarchist arguments and then find himself contradicting himself right. and the only logical path was being an anarchist. But yep. Yep. that's that's not uh yeah, a lot of agnostics just don't care either way. And a lot of um atheists are really, really, really adamant and religious about it, which mm-hmm. they are. I find interesting. But I guess <laughs> I guess it's kinda like us being religious about 
liberty. Like when people try to make state arguments for us, we're like, no, 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 you're wrong. Whereas right. deism, deism is basically the belief that there is a supreme creator of some sort and it created everything and then just kind of went to sleep and, you know, went bowling or something or went to a strip club and doesn't mediate in day to day, you know, like doesn't make the bus come on time when you say a little prayer and doesn't cure your kid's <laughs> cancer when you say a little prayer, you know. He said a little prayer. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, reminds me of that SNL bit with uh, Carrie Strug and her brother who was played by, who's that guy? You want some cookies? The other half of the night at the Roxbury that wasn't Will Ferrell. He's like, I said a little prayer. Um, but yeah, the, uh, the thing about atheists being so hardcore in their um, atheism, I think it's because they still see established religion as the villain in the world that's oppressing people and keeping people down. Yeah. Uh, but that that big villain in the world isn't. I guess it still it's is government, religion, but it's it's the religion of the state now. Yeah, and and, and I, I when try to religion, tell people this. Well, go ahead. When religion is problematic it's because the state is backing it i mean religion right. you can take it or leave it you know i mean i drive by a catholic church every day that has a big billboard that always says things like you know jesus doesn't want abortion or jesus doesn't want you to beat your wife or things that yeah. you know i don't do anyway without yeah. jesus but right. uh you know the the problem is when those people use the state to try to get their ends and and means enacted exactly it's exactly. like sharia you know like will coley made the argument that you know sharia isn't the problem uh women being forced to cover their faces is women covering their faces voluntarily isn't the problem it's the problem is where saudi arabia makes it mandatory right you know the problem is where uh you know sharia is mixed with the law of the state and it's mm -hmm. not voluntary and it's not something that you can opt out of Right. And I think it's because statists take the state as a foregone premise. Like the state to them is air or water. They don't even really – they're like fish in water. They don't even notice it's there. So they can never make that the villain. And people make arguments that, oh, that's what the the war in the Middle East is all about and that's what the Israel-Palestine is all about. It's about religion. And, you know, there's two old religions and they've been fighting for thousands of years. But really that's only a tiny part of it. I mean <laughs> really why they're fighting is because the British and other imperial powers divide it up the Middle East, drew these arbitrary lines, then gave this whole chunk of land to people who haven't been living there, uh, who, who then displaced the Palestinians. Um, so there's there's some religion in there because there's differences. But what really what really started it was state action. It was a politician. It was Winston Churchill drawing up the map before tea, as he said, and was quoted as saying about the <laughs> Middle East. It, it, it was the state that caused the two conflicting ideas or belief systems to be at odds with each other, not the two conflicting ideas and belief systems. It's interesting that you use the, you know, it's like a fish looking for water uh, or it's a fish swimming in water. He doesn't see the water for statists believing in the state. I've actually heard that same analogy in AA in favor of that. There is a God I've heard people say, you know, hmm. when people get into AA, they tell you, you got to find a higher power to stay sober. Yeah. And when the, young newly minted sober guy is looking for god and can't find it often the old timer will say looking for god is like a fish looking for water you know in other words it's all mm -hmm. around you mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> i heard there's an interesting analogy about um atheism i can't remember who made it but um they they said that um was it was it in, in favor of or against it it was basically that um Oh, it was it was in favor of creationism and against the theory of evolution without intervention of a, a higher power. And mm -hmm. it, it was someone said that uh, that things evolving on their own to the point they are now would be like a tornado going through a junkyard and assembling a Boeing seven forty seven. <laughs> which is which is kind of a stupid analogy because there wouldn't be any parts for that thing. It'd be more. I think a more apt thing would be you know a uh, tornado going through a junkyard and assembling a '67 Chevy because there's probably the parts for it in that <laughs> junkyard. But uh, it's actually kind of a takeoff on the hundred monkeys typing the work, works of Shakespeare, and it's pretty much dismissed by anyone who's as an analogy. It's pretty much dismissed as as hyperbole. Yeah, but that's that's the argument he's trying to make. Basically, is that it it, it can't be like the monkey on a typewriter. Um, I don't know, man. How do you do? You, do you believe in evolution? Is that a 
discussion we can have or want to Some, have. Somebody's uh, somebody's posting gun porn in the. Uh, that's oh, a nice, that's a nice of course, gun the porn. Misdirect. There. Yes, ch- let's change yeah, the subject. The misdirect. I don't. I, <laughs> that looks like an AK-47 shotgun. I don't even know what that is. But anyway, it's it's shiny things being dangled out of the. Corner no, of my that's eye. a high point. That's a high point carbine. Oh, that's that's okay. his high point. It looks like a nine mil or a thirty-eight or three eighty. And then below it, the hot, the oh, corresponding yep, carbon. Okay. Yeah. Well, it was shiny things out of the corner of my eye, and it did distract me from this tautological and theological discussion that we're having here, and cosmological yeah. discussion. So, your question is, do I believe in evolution? You sounded uh-huh. incredulous. Of course I do. No, no, it sounded like you didn't there. Like, if no, you make the argument that, okay, you do. I was making the argument that that argument is silly, even if it, uh, uh-huh. even if it proves what I believe. But it didn't prove what I believe. Um, because it was a religious person saying that evolution can't be how things happen without a God that they have, you know, saying that the theory of evolution is fact is like saying a tornado could assemble a jet plane by passing through a junkyard. Uh, 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 Yeah. yeah. No. And then there's that intelligent design thing, which is basically was literally something a Christian think tank came up with to get creationism into schools. And, uh, you know, it's, it's kind of a thing of like, well, God created everything, but he used evolution, which if, you know, I mean, that makes more sense to me in my watchmaker theory of the world, which is where God is the watchmaker who wound everything up and set the gears in motion and then walked away. Although I never liked the watchmaker analogy because that would mean the watch is winding down and stopping eventually. Yeah. But you I know, guess I've never I've never felt the need uh to justify some kind of central planning on the universe for, you know, life on earth or solar systems or anything like that. I mean, not not to say that there isn't one. I'm not trying to make an argument for atheism uh or against deism in any way or against theism in any way. But um to me it doesn't seem uh ex- well, I guess it seems extraordinary, but it doesn't seem beyond the ken for evolution to have produced what we see now. Um, because the universe does amazing things all the time, like things that we can't even conceive of yet. Um, yeah. so I don't, I don't yeah. see why creating some, uh, hairless monkeys who can create the internet is so surprising. <laughs> That's awesome. Um, yeah, I mean, I don't really put a lot of thought to God and to, a lack of God or a God or what God did or what God's going to do to me to punish or <laughs> what me. God's going to do to me what to punish me, to me for God. <laughs> touch it, me. You, God touch. Well, you, I feel like you don't want to be God's sub. Is that it? <laughs> when I believed in God, when I believed in God as, you know, before I was a deist, um, I, I base, you know, I, I used to say I was religious. Uh, God touches me in special places all the time. You know, I kind of nice. had a sexual view of God, but, um, uh, and I have that song. God is a woman. God, my God is a woman, 700 feet tall. Blah blah blah, um, which which is really, it was kind of cute. Basically, that was NAA when they said you got to find a higher power. I was a sex maniac at the time, so I said, "Well, okay, my god is a seven hundred foot tall woman." But there was some really specious stuff. If that's not specious enough, there was some specious stuff in that song. Like, if an airplane flies over my head, she put it there to keep me entertained. It's basically I'm the center of the universe kind of mm-hmm. song. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Yeah. Someone said, yep, you're going to hell <laughs> nice, in the, in the nice. chat room. Nice. It's nice to go to hell. I don't know. I don't believe in a hell. Um, I ah, I don't know. I, I don't even think there's a biblical basis for hell from what I'm – what I've seen, you know, and, and mostly from hearing from Ben Stone talk about it. I don't know if there's actually – uh, explicit hell spelled out in the Bible. But, well, there is something about uh, a lake I'm not of fire. Gonna, I'm not going to read that whole thing, man. I know. Does, there is something about a lake of fire, and uh, but it's not in the context of hell. It's in the context of the book of Revelation, I believe. But uh, I, I think, from what I know, from listening to people who have actually read it, like Ben Quaker, um, all that is something that was made up in the Middle Ages by priests to scare, to people. scare people into mm-hmm. compliance. It was basically the government. It was the priest right. acting, the church acting. The church was the government then. Right. Hell was terrorism of the Middle Ages. No, hell was prison of the Middle Ages. When when things were so bad that prison looked good, they needed something worse than prison. <laughs> okay, okay. Fair enough, but but uh, I mean terrorism in the sense that it was the scary thing that you should all be more afraid of, so that you can cede your power and autonomy to us, the central, uh, 
you know, religion or I think clergy. we should I think we should open it up for calls. If there's anybody who knows more about this stuff than we do from either side or the middle side or no side, why don't you call in? What's the number there, there you Nima? Go. Ah, uh, you can I call us know our number. at 307-215-5171. That's the Fiends live call-in number. It is our Fiends agenda show, no longer on Adam Curry Network, but our own freaking agenda. And you can call us at 307-215-5171. Thank you, Fiends. Yep. And I got a few announcements here while we wait for our first caller. Um, the name of this title is The Fiends, A Gift to the Future. And that's another kind of like, really, boy, you sure think a lot of yourself. But <laughs> every one of these casts we do, I'm not doing for, I mean, I'm doing it for the people that are going to listen live and going to listen tomorrow on the podcast. But I'm really doing it for 10, 20, 30, 50, 100 years from now. And we are working mm -hmm. towards keeping that solidly available through BitTorrent. So, oh, yeah. you know, yeah. if you're not it's, torrenting. It's, it's it's funny you you brought up the self-deprecating ego joke because uh, somebody in the chat room said Nima tell MWD huge echo when we were testing sound because I had you echoing and you read it as ego I read it as ego <laughs> I said tell him yeah. yourself I'm not gonna tell Michael that but um, no you're right uh, media can be disposable or long lasting and I hope at least that's the goal that we we don't just say this happened it was bad you know th there's that saying and it's said by some evil wife of a status i don't know if she was evil but she was the wife of an evil status like eleanor roosevelt or something like that who said that uh you know small minds discuss people mediocre minds discuss events and great minds discuss ideas and i think there's Ooh. something to that because ideas that's awesome say it again small minds small minds discuss people mediocre minds discuss events and great minds discuss ideas and i feel like a lot of liberty media uh focuses on the first two more than the second two or the last one <laughs> Uh, yeah, I think a lot of media in general. Um, I mean, a, a good example of this is um, take a look at Entertainment Tonight or Celebrity News. Think of the intellectual range there <laughs> when you're watching TMZ or something like that. Think of the kind of people who watch that. Uh, and then move on up to something like CNN Headline News. Those are the people that discuss events, but they still discuss people, uh, especially if it's about a sex scandal like Petraeus, you know, boning some chick. <laughs> oh, that's the worst thing in the world. I don't get it. Um, but the people who really discuss ideas usually aren't even on TV because you're not allowed to discuss ideas on TV. God forbid yeah. people ponder the premises on which society is based because those kinds of things threaten the status quo. They don't want you to ponder the basic premises at all. And they'll make a nod to discussing ideas, but they don't really. I mean, like, Meet the Press, which has been going since, like, 1968 or something. I remember watching it as a kid. And the I the idea was smart minds getting together together touching on the concepts of the, you know, the news of the day, but then discussing the ideas behind it. But it was mm -hmm. flawed because it was all from a status point of view. Right, right, right. Yeah. Uh, see, yeah, that that's a misdirect. That's, okay, we're going to discuss ideas. And then there's two flavors of statist ideas. It fools people into thinking that those are the only two ideas available. Yeah. Um, like, uh, I was talking Con to somebody. I, get, I gave a coworker a ride home the other day, and we were chilling a little bit after, you know, smoking a cigarette or whatever. Um, and somehow my podcast came up as a subject in, in anarchy, and it was like, "So what did you think of the election?" <laughs> and you know, I explained, "Well, it's just ridiculous. There shouldn't be elections in the first place." But for somebody to ask that question at first of an anarchist, like that should be obvious, right? Like, who do you like better, Mister Anarchist, Barack Obama, it's, or Mitt it's Romney? Like, it's like asking an atheist, "What do you like better, Catholicism or Buddhism?" Right. You right, know, right, right, right. <laughs> or, you know, in America, it would probably be Catholicism or baptism. Yeah, yeah. Um, Baptists. Baptism? Baptists. What's Baptistism called? I I don't know. I guess it's just a form of Protestantism. I don't know what the... Bap it's really hardcore Protestantism. Yeah. It's kind of yeah. awesome. It's kind of awesome. Kind of awesome? Um, it's kind of interesting. I mean, even if you yeah. if you don't even cover the extreme weirdos like the snake handlers and the poison drinkers but uh just baptism in general i mean it's it's really 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 hardcore my dad was a baptist my dad was a baptist preacher or a baptist uh sunday school teacher when he was younger yeah and I everyone here grandpa everyone here, on my mom's side is baptist now like he converted when he was like 70 or something and his wife is a baptist but i don't really visit with them or talk to them much so i don't really 
it, it, I don't really, it doesn't affect me and I don't really know much about it. Uh, I mean, I, I hear the basic stereotypes like, oh, they're not supposed to dance and things like that. But um, do you know more about it? Like what's so hardcore about it? Well, there's actually something that's called, I think it's called hardcore Baptists where they do smoke and drink and cuss and uh, dance, but it's okay because not just like the Catholics where they, you know, apologize at, but it's more like it doesn't matter if you got the Lord in you, you can do all that anyway. I kind of like that <laughs> because redemption and forgiveness from Jesus is all that matters. So once you're saved, you're saved and you can do whatever. Yeah. Yeah. I had the thought when I was like 13 and I sort of kind of thought about becoming born again, or maybe I did. I think I, I think I was quote unquote saved. Uh, and I was just, I was wondering, and I did take it to that logical conclusion, like immediately, like, Oh, well I'm saved. I'm saved. So, doesn't matter what I do. And then they try to counter it. Well, well, if you're truly saved, then you will automatically act like you have Jesus in you and you will automatically be nice. But uh, that seems to kind of take free will out of the whole concept, doesn't it? Yeah, I actually, you know, did that save crap, too, when I was younger and then kind of renounced it later. And this girl that was Catholic Christian, uh, hardcore Protestant, some weird church, I don't remember, who wanted to marry me, um, <clears throat> basically told me that that once you're saved, you can't not be saved. You know, like it was kind of like forever. It was like AIDS. You know, it was like <laughs> or HIV. It's like you can't expatriate from the U.S. <laughs> yeah, it's uh, like herpes. Once you like got herpes. it, you can't get nice. rid of it. Nice. No uh, take backs. I, yeah, I remember there was um one of those big TV churches, Lakewood Church in Houston, I think it was, with Joel Ost Osteen. Your, your, your part of the country is really big on that kind of stuff. Yeah, yeah. And I guess Joel Osteen was the son, and then there was his dad, who was like a big televangelist too. Like, you can see them on TV, like pretty much anywhere. And um, he, Joel Osteen had a hot wife, like super hot, like giant tatas, nice body, pretty face. And uh, I remember my aunt was big into the Lakewood Church, and so we went there with her once. And they did this thing where you could come up front and be saved and give a hug to his wife. And so mm. I, I uh, acted like I was saved again so I could go touch his wife. <laughs> That's wow. horrible. Uh, I was 18. You know, Are you confessing dunking. over your, your pod confessional? Oh, there you go. Sure, yeah. <laughs> I'm so, just saying, Joel, Joel Osteen, I tried to cop a feel on your wife, so what are you going to do? <laughs> say what you said about um, crappy pod uh Pod, we, you did a podcast. Oh, yeah. We're not going to say who, but uh, it, it was like unlistenable. I mean, it it was ah, like it was the first bad. thing. The, it was no, bad. I don't no, know it, was it was unlistenable. unlistenable. The first thing I recorded on a computer in 2006, when I had no idea what I was doing, sounded better, and that was done by like, you know, plugging a little microphone from a tape recorder, like those little plastic mics, into the computer directly with no mixer or anything, no you know EQ, no sound compression no preamp nothing plugged it in and use like the built-in windows 3.1 recorder and recording mm -hmm. something and it sounded better than what that guy <laughs> did in 2012 man uh, well, yeah. what'd, you, what'd you say about it well it didn't sound like it sounded like it's some kind of app or something or something that you, anybody can get on the internet uh like something they pitched to granny is granny where we call it and uh the name i came up for it was menopod <laughs> so <laughs> so gertrude can tell the world about what she's cooking or something like that menopod for middle-aged men who want who want to yell at the world while they from the comfort of their home while they look at squirrels <laughs> outside the window Menopod. menopods yeah. yeah you said now gertrude can podcast too which is funny because my late grandmother's name was gertrude uh, uh, and you know okay. if she were around today she'd probably be doing a podcast where like because she was baptist and really religious and she'd probably be talking about jesus on a menopod yeah yeah, yeah. well i i started off with ethel as the old lady name but uh i guess i wasn't spelling it right because when i spelled it i was thinking ethyl alcohol and so i put a y and i was like no that'll be confusing so <laughs> I, I went with something else i went with gertrude which is unmistakably an old woman's name yeah Not it's an old German name. It, it's one of those names that not many people are named that anymore, like Lydia. Although a lot of his, no white ladies are named Lydia anymore. It's all, uh, <laughs> it's a Hispanic name, but. Yeah. 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 Um, Which is too bad. Lydia is a nice name. Gertrude's, well, well, name not, Gertrude's not. Gertrude and Hazel. And names like are kind of Helga. cyclical too, yeah. like fashion. Um which is interesting too, because my my wife's really into that, like looking into which names are popular when, and it's, it's kind names. of interesting names for witches. <laughs> for witches, it's kind of interesting how that plays out 
sans central planning, it's almost like there, there's natural attractors and natural order. It's a good example, I think, of, of anarchic order, of how something will just all of a sudden become popular and people will take to it. And it, it, it goes in like trackable cycles. And it's, it's really interesting because fashion does the same thing. Uh, music does the same thing. Um, so I would point to that as an example of, of anarchic order, how when people left to their own designs, um, their own desires, uh, like in music or fashion, um, there, there can be standardization. There can be something that people agree upon and do and listen to and consume. And you don't need somebody in a grand Soviet somewhere telling you how many shoelaces to make. Now, uh, is or, Soviet a, a noun like that? You I use think it so. I, I like it. I've never heard yeah. that before. Yeah, I'm pretty sure it is. I'm not a hundred. I mean, I wasn't. I was barely alive during the Cold War, but I'm pretty sure like the Soviet was a noun for some kind of committee or some kind of subset of the state in communist or Soviet countries. I'm not hundred percent sure on that. I'm but posting so. kitty pictures in the chat room. Huh? Some I just took. The one of Fuzzy sitting on my pod table. Uh, <laughs> he jumped down before I could take a better one. But Fuzzy was he? No, that's Peanut or I see Peanut. I'm, I'm getting there. Okay. Okay. You see the the I posted a cat picture uh, yesterday of my cat curled up next to uh, my Springfield XD nine millimeter. <laughs> he just like went and curled up in a ball next to my gun. I don't know Aww, why, but it was cute. Guarding it, or it was guarding him. No, he was guarding it. Cats guard you while it. you sleep. They guard your valuables. Do they really? <laughs> I somehow doubt that. Yeah. I don't know, man. I don't know what cats are good for other than petting occasionally and laughing at their goofiness. They are really goofy. They get on my nerves sometimes, man. They're always... We have three cats, and it kind of feels like we have eight cats because they're always active. For me, one, it's... One they're, they're, is always active. And you go in one room, and then you go in the other room, and the same cat's in there being active. Like active, like noisy, like scratching on walls, stuff like all that. All of it. All of it. All of it. See, mine are annoying because I feel like there's always some kind of bodily function coming out of one of them onto our rug. And why is it that no matter – I've lived in so many apartments lately that, that have like tile or fake hardwood on the floor, you know, like not carpet. The animal will find the one carpeted spot or the one piece of softness like a rug or a shirt on the ground – to do any bodily function in pu poop pee it's like they they don't why why do they have to find something soft to do that on i i literally can't leave a dirty piece of clothing on the floor because we they'll have either a, a do crazy it, old cat that will go pee on it they'll either do it on there or uh on a book on a book oh yeah <laughs> yeah my uh my little cat the one that's actually ours flock in the orange one i guess he's not little he's big but uh he took a dookie on Ayn Rand's um, Atlas Shrugged. <laughs> I was like 200 pages in, and he just plopped on it. And I'm like, oh, why would you, why'd you have to do that? Um, but I don't know. Rand, I guess who needs her at this point? Yeah. She she, she, helped, she helped to build some parts of the road, but uh, the road's already there. I'm just driving on it now. Yeah. 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 So let's see. we got some more news here. More news. There's an awesome movie that I want people to go out and watch because we're going to review it. It's called Uprising, and it is about the um, – what's it about, Nima? Well, apparently it's about the Warsaw Ghetto. Uh, I haven't watched it yet. I just downloaded it. But there was an uprising in the Warsaw Ghetto. I actually read the the description of it in – what's that book Unintended Consequences. Unintended I didn't send you that. That book's uh, – no, man. I didn't send you that. No. What? No. Oh. <laughs> I was using the Royal You. <laughs> it was you, a rhetorical yeah, good year. catch. Uh, so, um, but yeah, I uh, I took a look at that, and it, I I really want to know more about it. So I'd really like to see this movie because apparently, like twenty, thirty, or what, forty, three hundred, three, three for three hundred and fifty. So I think it was actually like six hundred. Yeah, um, mm -hmm. the movie's yeah, really a about amount. the movie's about one cell of them. But um, uh, okay. yeah, basically the Nazis, you know, surrounded Warsaw. Uh, and there was, you know, pushed all the Jews into one neighborhood, which they called the ghetto, which is where the term ghetto comes from. Right. Which is what and, the Jews are now doing to Palestinians in the West Bank. Yeah. It, which is really <laughs> ironic. And that's, you know, going to be a whole, uh, a whole nother discussion. But yeah, I mean, that was the goal in this movie was to get to Palestine, you know, like, hold on, let me retract Palestine. that. So I don't sound anti-Semitic and I don't like to break up your thought process, but, uh, when I say Jews, I meant the Israeli state. There you I shouldn't go. have said Jews because there it's not go. a whole religious 
collectivist thing. It's the, the Israeli state. Sorry. Go on, Michael. Yeah. Um, basically, the whole the whole thing as it happened, and this movie's pretty historically accurate presentation of it, is a really important example of why citizens should own guns, own them quietly, have a few buried, and be able to uh, use them. Really, what happened was like a bunch of uh, the Jews in the ghetto. You know, a lot a lot of people were like going along. I mean, first of all, this movie is kind of unique uh, in that generally, with not with movies about the Nazis, it's all about what happened in the camps and how they were killed. And this actually shows before that what day to day life was like before before they all got shipped off and how horrible uh. it was just on a day to day like, you know. Got cops on the street, soldiers on the street, stopping you, searching your bags, stealing your stuff. You know, kind of. I mean, I saw a lot of kind, parallels kind of like America today. today. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. But um, it, yeah, it showed a lot of that. And basically, they were rounding Jews up and taking them to what they said were work camps, which were actually <laughs> extermination camps. Oh, they made them work for a while until they couldn't work anymore and then killed them. But yeah. there were some Jews. A lot of there's a lot. There were a lot of Jews who were like you know we can't fight back this is going to get better if we fight back they'll just kill us we can just hope and pray to our god that he'll come down and fix everything and this won't go on and we'll be saved or you know the americans will march in and next week and save us mm -hmm. and there were a few who were like not in denial they were like no they are going to systematically kill every one of us after robbing us and torturing us then they're going to kill us and they weren't trained with guns, and basically they had a few broken, effed up pistols, you know, the family pistol or whatever. And what they started to do was plan and systematically um, get people together. And there were spies, and when they found spies, they'd kill them. Um, and they figured out how to do urban warfare, guerrilla warfare. And they would do things mm -hmm. like, you know, walk up to a soldier, ask him for a light of a cigarette and, you know, or ask him a question or something. And another guy would come up behind him and shoot him in the back of the head, like under the helmet, you know, mm -hmm. right up in the brain pan. And then, mm. you know, they do that when there's nobody else looking, try to get, you know, try to not get caught. And then they grab their rifle and their sidearm and mm -hmm. their cigarettes and sometimes <laughs> their uniform. I mean, some of them were actually Jews wearing Nazi uniforms to blend in, which is pretty awesome. So the the movie has a lot about how to conduct guerrilla warfare, I guess, which is really surprising because it was made by Hollywood and it stars like some actual gun hating uh, actors in it. I also thought it was kind of funny that they made um, the one Republican in Hollywood. What's his name? John Voight. They made him a Nazi. <laughs> this is very Hollywood. But I'm just amazed yeah. this was a Hollywood product. Huh? And, well, uh, it, it didn't. I mean, it wasn't like a hit. It didn't take off, did it? I mean... No, it was a three-hour miniseries on TV, and when you search it oh. on whatever those networks are where people search, um, first of all, you can get it on DVD on Netflix in America. It's not available okay. for streaming, and it's not available in Canada, someone told me, but mm -hmm. um, there's other ways to get movies, and I don't really want to go into it, but if you look for it for that, you have to search through, because when you search Uprising, there's a lot of other things that aren't this movie, because there's a Tron movie called Uprising. <laughs> yeah, so there's like there's like a thousand results for that and one for uprising the movie ah, and the okay. only version that's out there on those kind of networks is english but it has burned in swedish subtitles you have to ignore so mm. whatever mm. but anyway i just posted this thing in the um in the chat room that i want to discuss go ahead and yeah. click on it it's from the jews for the Pre preservation of firearm ownership website which is was started by a guy whose dad was killed in uh, Nazi Germany and he's smart about it and doesn't forget you know the JPFO are the few Jews who go yeah we don't want this to happen again that's why we want to have guns whereas the, a lot of the gun grabbing politicians are Jewish it's kind of surprising to me that they don't remember and don't think this could happen again but of course now they're they're part of they're part of the uh, they feel the like SS, they're part of the power know? structure the, yeah, right so they'll keep right. it from happening or they want it to have you know they want they'll be on the right side of it they think but I don't know the name of the movie is uprising and um, but look at this JPFO link to the firearms laws in Israel I'm really surprised how restrictive they are considering this and I talked to my friend who grew up in Israel lives in America now he's the only person I know who has been in both the Israeli army and the US army 
and he has pretty uh, unique perspectives on a lot of it. And he's kind of a minarchist, you know, kind of, I mean, he's not quite anarchist, but he's a gun guy and a motorcycle enthusiast. And, uh, you know, I asked him, like, do they, you know, do they teach about this uprising in school in Israel? Are these people looked at as heroes? And he's like, yes, they teach it in school and they're looked at as heroes. And I'm like, what about with American Jews? And he's like, I don't really know any American Jews. You know, he's, he's Jewish, <laughs> but he's not involved, I guess. Mm -hmm. Um, mm -hmm. But he said that in Israel, they teach about the uprising and talk about these brave people who did these incredibly brave things, you know, knowing they could die anyway. Basically, the whole thing was, we know we're going to die. We'd rather take a few of them out first. And, you know, mm -hmm. maybe if 700 of us try this, 10 of us can get out. And 10 or 20 mm -hmm. did. They got right. out by going through the sewers, through dead bodies and shit, and... While the well, and, Nazis were pumping poison gas and pouring gasoline in there and lighting it, right, and that's what it took. Like, didn't didn't they hold off the Nazi uh, war machine, which was huge and massive and uh, overblown? Didn't they hold them off for like months? Yeah, uh, just a small handful of resistors with a small handful of weapons held back Panzer tanks and the air, the German Air Force uh, or the Luftwaffe, I guess it's called. Um, yeah, th that's insane. Uh, I mean. I, I guess they still met their end, but uh, you know, I feel like I would rather be a resistor and have that chance to be one of those ten that get out, or get my family out, or at, at the very least, um, die not as a slave but as a freedom fighter. Interestingly, there's actually an actor in this movie who looks exactly like you, and um, ah. I mean, right. exactly. Like he I, hate, I hate it when people say that. I'm always really scared to go look at what they actually look like. Um, he looks way more like you than your brother Frank looks like you, and Frank looks a lot like you. Huh. Weird. But, okay. um, and he's originally, he's a Polish Jew, and originally he was a rat. He was, you know, he was work, a policeman working for the Nazis, which a lot of the Jews did to feed their families, and he literally says that in there, like, I don't like his friend, you know, a friend he grew up with is like, why are you wearing this uniform? Why are you doing this? And he's like, I don't like it, but I have to feed my family and protect my family. And he ends up joining the resistance and actually being uh, really brave. And, and he also like stays as one of these uniformed officers. So he for a while, so he can like mm. blend in and mm -hmm. false flag and do surveillance and find out what they're up to. And in the end of this, he actually sacrifices himself and dies so the other others can get out. And it's really, I mean, that's what a hero hmm. is, you know. Oh wow, wow. Okay. So well, I should, I should, I definitely want to give that a look. But like you told me two days ago, and literally, I worked and went to bed and woke up and podcasted. So you and your uh, working and your <laughs> marriage, God, your life. <laughs> getting in the way of the pot. I'm kidding. It's not. Um, but read this JPFO link. Read. The thing, yeah. like All what right. it takes to have a gun in Israel. It's really amazing to me because it's actually, in a way, like less restrictive than like, you know, can like Australia, where it's really hard to own a gun, but you can if you bend over and do all this crap and pay all this money and join these clubs and stuff. But it's more restrictive in that it's incredibly statist. So go ahead and read these. All right. All right. Uh, and before we preface, before I read it, I also want to preface it with, um, you know, Israel. Well, okay. I, I'm going to wait until we get to the second section of this. I'm just going to go ahead and start reading. All right. The, the Israeli Department of the Interior makes notification to the general public the requirements necessary for the obtaining of a permit to possess a firearm. One, applicant must be a permanent resident of Israel for three consecutive years prior to making application for firearms permit. Two, applicant must be 21 years of age. Three, the permit request must be for personal use, not to engage in the business of firearm sales. Four, applicant must fall into one of the following categories. A, part-time reservist for three years may own one handgun. B, such a reservist is a m member of a gun club. And res may own reservist one basically rifle. means it's like the National Guard. Right, right. For the IDF, I'm guessing. Yeah. Um, C, professional licensed licensed public transportation driver transporting a minimum of five passengers may own one so bus drivers can own no one i think gun. that's like you know maybe bus drivers but it says I'm, a minimum of five uh, so yeah, that'd okay. be bigger than a cab it's not a limo yeah it's bus drivers yeah. d 
licensed animal control officer <laughs> may own two hunting rifles, not fully automatic weapons, or semi-automatic weapons with a limited capacity magazine. So what, he has to have uh, bolt action uh, or lever action, I Sounds guess? Sounds like five or ten round uh -huh. rifle. All right. Eat. Yeah, so after you after you wing that bear that's eating Jewish children or Israeli children, <laughs> you have to quickly eating reload. Eating Jew scouts like in the South Park episode. Jew scouts. Oh, there's, man. there's an episode where bears actually go eat the little juice. Well, they're Jew squirts. They're not yet Jew scouts. Anyway, squirts. E, that's the Cub Scouts, yeah. Right. Full-time dealer of jewelry or large sums of cash or valuables may own okay, one. <laughs> now, that, that is really sounds like Saturday Night Live. <laughs> like, boy, that, you know, like you'd have Adam Sandler talking right. about, boy, that right. sounds Jewy. You know, like, yeah, well, if, yeah. you, if you deal jewelry, you get to carry a gun. Hey, it's in the word. Are they the same Latin root for jewelry and Jew? Or am I, I just don't being think racist? so. You are, that's again, racist. Again, I'm you not a Arab. It's just for the sake of joking. You're acting like an Arab. I'm not even... Arabs are Semitic, too. They can't be anti-Semitic unless they're still... Well, they don't like Jews, though, generally. Yeah, yeah. Well, they should. And, I, mean, I don't know. Anyway, one. Uh, oh, so here's the next division. West Bank and Gaza Strip settlers. I know. They get extra guns. No, not even, do they? I they they, so. they they get one handgun. So Well, if and, you're in the, basically, if you're in the Gaza Strip, you can get a gun... A, and if you're not, you can't unless you're a statist or a ah, jewelry dealer. Right. So, right, like, you, you know, people always make jokes about, like, you know, I don't want this, you know, like, there's a thing on the shield, like, you know, Vic Mackey, like, I want to regulate you drug dealers. You know, you make payoffs to me. And as long as this place doesn't end up look, as long as my section of LA doesn't look like the Gaza Strip, you're, you can keep <laughs> operating and paying me off. You know, it's kind of like they say, if you want a libertarian paradise, go to Somalia. You're like the Gaza Strip is what they use and people use as an example of like a mm -hmm. war zone in contemporary society. So mm -hmm. if you live in a war zone, they'll let you have a gun. One handgun. A resident, uh, yeah. West Bank and yeah. Gaza Strip settlers. One, a resident in a military strategic buffer zone essential to the security of the state of Israel may own one handgun. You're going to use a it to like shoot those. A business those, owner in these those. geographic areas may own one handgun. I guess, I guess the Gazans only have rocks, so. <laughs> no, they have, the Gaza, they have, well, the Gaza Strip gets shot, doesn't it get shot with missiles made out of like sewer tubes and gunpowder that aren't guided and just kind of fly over and don't explode and just land and break things? I'm not sure if, if the Gazans, you know, the Palestinian Gazans shoot those into the settlements in the Gaza Strip. I think they tend to shoot them into Israel proper or, mm. you know, what's now considered, you know, main Israel. I don't know what they call it, but not Gaza Strip. I think they try to launch them. And yeah, um, there was a big hubbub about how they had a much longer range, but they had a longer range because they took off any explosive. So it was just a pipe. <laughs> basically launching a pipe a few thousand yards into the enemy zone uh with nothing on nothing attached to it just a pipe yeah and using like a uh, a rifle bullet primer to set it off and a nail right. or something yeah 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 uh yeah basically you know a medieval missile not right. that there was gunpowder in medieval well a, a, there was a step above a catapult kind of yeah yeah it's basically uh, catapulting a sewer tube into your neighboring yeah. Which it's but, still wrong. It's still aggression. I'm not co-signing that you – oh, yeah, well, you're right in your ability to launch into – you know, because it's, it's not targeted. It, that, that can't be self-defense. That's, that's trying to harm civilians, you know, because, yeah, you might not die, but if you get hit with a big pipe falling from the sky, it's going to hurt. And I guess you could, well, you could die. People die, do die from it. it. Hits you in the head. Do you know General Electric has some missile-guided – defense system against that i forget what it's called but iron it's, dome yeah it costs like a mm -hmm. billion dollars and it's it's yeah. supposed to hit those in the air before and yeah, you know right it doesn't work very well but <laughs> no, general electric sells them and makes them general of dynamics. course they do because some that's, general, that's some general that's what it's all about in the end isn't it is, is stuff like that so you can give them fancy names and make a shit ton of money on them yeah um Ugh, I'm so sick of looking at Steve's wedding pics, and I'm all out of passive-aggressive comments. What else am I supposed to do at work all day? Sick of stalking your ex on Facebook? Yeah! Are you all out of cute cats and autocorrect mishaps to lol at? Duh! Freedom Fiends to the rescue! The Fiends now have a blog. Read all about the latest tyranny today. Dream about lip pair. Laugh while Western civilization collapses. Just click on the cat icon to the right of freedomfiends.com. Freedom Fiends blog. Read it! You've read books, attended lectures, and you know the Constitution well enough to know it's a well-crafted blueprint to create an ever-increasing federal empire. But there's still one thing missing. Buttons! 
Freedom Fiends now has buttons. We have Freedom Fiends, Anarchy Gumbo, and two designs for guns and weed the road to freedom. Wear them with pride. Use them to start conversations with statists. It's only $6 for four buttons, including shipping. Go to freedomfiends.com and click on the link at the top that says buttons. Okay, we're recording again. I guess yep. I bring that up because uh, some people think like the Gazans are an actual country with an army or something like that. And oh, poor Israel is the victim. But no, like Gaza no, Israel, is a, a- Israel basically was formed by Jews leaving Nazi Germany and doing to Palestine what the the Nazis were doing to, uh, you know, to Poland. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, I think I think the best way I've heard it now, I think his name was Max Blumenthal. I'm not sure, but he was – he's Jewish, and he makes the point that um, what Israel really is today is it's um, – Indian Reservation. Well, yeah, it's a settler, it's a settler colonial movement. So it's like, it's like America in Indian days or like South Africa in apartheid days. Yeah, it's not an Indian reservation. It's, it's the, it's what's outside the reservation. The Gaza Strip is the Indian reservation. Is the reservation, right. Yeah. Uh, it's, it's, it's a bunch of, uh, non natives moving to a geographical region, claiming it as their own and having to deal with the indigenous population, which was the Palestinians. And he makes the point that, you know, now in America, it's, it's sort of farther behind us. Um, you know, we name sports teams after the people that we committed genocide on. You know, you have the Redskins and, and they're cutesy and, and it, it's far enough back in our head to where they're not a threat anymore. Um, but in, in Israel, um, you know, it's ongoing. They're in the process of the ethnic cleansing and the genocide. Um, and did you see that thing now that um, apparently as, as part of this um, – I don't know if it, genocide is the right word, but ethnic cleansing. Basically, they, they want to get rid of all the people that are in the Gaza and the West Bank. Um, so one of the things they do regularly is they destroy rainwater cisterns. So there's no actual state plumbing or, or you know modern plumbing in a lot of uh, the Gaza Strip and the West Bank. So they collect rainwater. Um, the IDF will go around blowing those up. To, to basically dehydrate the populations of the Gaza and the you know West a lot of a lot of places in the Middle East um, the average American's view of them or a common view in America is like oh those people are living in the Stone Age they're living in the Stone Age because of things like this of like taking right. their rainwater and yes. blowing things up um, and the Palestinians actually had a really advanced uh, civilization with art science. Uh, you know, they were kind of like almost ahead of England before, uh, you know, the League of Nations, the UN, England, uh, England and the US went in and devastated them. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's really important to note. Uh, I mean, most places like this, the reason they are in the Stone Age is because there's they're war torn and they're war torn because of the state. Right. It's not these like. I want to bring this full circle here. It's not because we're just all so many different religions that we all just can't get along. Yeah, and they no. were all killing each other over there occasionally before we all showed up, before you know the West showed up. But all of the aggression against the West or aggression, you know, violence against the West is they they consider it self defense. You know, I mean, there was none of that really before. World War One, before the English came in and started conquering mm-hmm. and said, you know, this is going, we're going to tell you what to do with your land and we're yeah. going to move in a bunch of foreigners, you know, uh, right. I mean, there's well, a lot of parallels. Scott Horton was uh, talking about this Yahoo article he read out of um, the Helmand province in Afghanistan, you know, where they tried to have the Afghan surge and give them the quote unquote government in the box. You know, that was the big thing two years ago or something. That was What's, what's in thing. the box? Is it, like, is, apparently. It, is it like the box that you get? It, it's probably very unlike the box that they have. Um, in, in a Cracker Jack or a cereal no, box? No, the box in um, in the movie where the guy's riding the bomb. What's it called? Uh, How I Learned to Love the Bomb, Dr. Yeah. Strange Love. Yeah. 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 Remember when the when the Air Force pilots are about to bail out after they drop the nuke? They're looking through their survival box, and it's like – a bunch of speed uppers, downers, nylons, <laughs> lipstick. That's the opposite of government in a box. That's the government made it, but it's like that's a party in a box, man. That party in a box. Right. Whether right. you can find a woman to use it with or not, you could make make your own woman in a yeah. hotel room out of that box, out of yourself. Yeah. Yeah. But but Scott made the point that um 
these people in this Helmand province are saying they miss the Taliban. And the Taliban wasn't that great. They like, you know, the Taliban did awful things and was very repressive. But that's how bad the Americans or some well, outsider ruling them is. There were some there were people who after prohibition missed the mafia because at least under the mafia, like, you know, you could pay off the, the local shop could pay them off. And literally, if mm-hmm. anybody did anything to your shop, they'd be dead. So you had protection. Whereas once the mafia was gone. The police, you had to pay them anyway, but then the police would come in and, right. and mess with your shop and your, your patrons and you. Right, right. Exactly, exactly. Yeah, I, yeah, and I, I guess that's the whole point is is the culprit is the state because it's ineffective uh, and and unresponsive. And it's both of those things because they get all of their resources through force. So they're ineffective because they don't need to care about customer service or, or if you enjoy what they're doing to you. Um, and they're unresponsive for the same reason because they'll just you, – you pay them no matter what. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, it's, it's, it's a sad situation um, in, in the whole Middle East. And, yes, they are in the Stone Age, but um, – you know, you'd be in the Stone Age too, or we'd be in the Stone Age too, if the Chinese had battle carrier groups and drones flying over our skies and were trying to export their Chinese socialist democracy to us in a box. In, the past, in a box. Governments the past love things decades. in a box. Do you know about internet in a box? No. It's something that the CIA came up with, and I've seen a picture of the box in Wired magazine. It's the size of a very large suitcase. It's basically for countries where the local tyrant is not in favor with the US that week and they're <laughs> um they're you know the local tyrant is blocking the internet the CIA mm. will send a guy in put him up in a hotel room and he will provide internet a limited huh. amount of internet with this box wirelessly for in an, in an, in a neighborhood so people can tweet and organize to have their you know an uprising protest. yeah the yeah, uprising yeah. so the so the CIA can install their, their right. favored guy yep. there for yep. 20 years and then kill him like they usually do like they did with uh, <laughs> yeah. yeah 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 I was going to say if if the CIA is doing that is because they have that ulterior motive yeah right? and it's, it's basically it you know it's like a little collapsible satellite dish that they point out the window at the satellite and then it's some wireless routers that transmit internet you know through this satellite to the neighborhood wow wow yeah, it is. It is just amazing that that can happen, right? The the technology of that is an ama- is amazing, and just just think of the power of humanity to do something like that. Um, and yet, think of all of the wasted power that's doing it for evil reasons. And 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 the thing is, there'd be evil even in a free society, even in an anarchic society. But we would recognize it as evil. Most people would understand that it was evil and wouldn't give it legitimacy. The main problem is that this kind of evil thing. The average person sees and they're indoctrinated, so they don't call it evil. They call it uh, public policy. Um, that's the main thing that I think needs to change. Yeah. That's so square. Policy so, is so square. Yeah. 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 What was it? We, we said something about central planning. Oh, that was – never mind. That was in our last uh, our last episode. Yeah, stop trying to centrally plan the conversation. Like I know. That. Do you know Howard Stern <laughs> ran for governor of New York on the Li- Libertarian Party? In, yeah, uh, you were telling me that in the eighties, and what? but he, he and they and the Libertarian Party put him up. You know, they picked him over some other real libertarian. And Howard Stern's platform was to reinstate the death penalty, stagger Ugh. highway tolls to improve traffic flow, and limit road work to night hours. Boy. There, there's so much wrong with that from a libertarian standpoint. I mean, even like, okay, reinstate the death penalty is not a libertarian thing. Basically yeah. saying the state should be able to murder. You know? <laughs> um, and then his other two things were about roads. Yeah, I mean, man. Well, it's it's A, I don't think that's libertarian. And B, there is kind of a different flavor of libertarian that I think should be cut off. Like it's not really a part of us. Uh, They may be fellow travelers in that they use similar language in the same word. But there's a cutoff, right? And I think true anarcho-capitalists or what I just decided are true libertarians, you know, people who follow the non-aggression principle, are much different than sort of beltway libertarians and, and people like this who it seems like all they want to do is make the government more efficient, which in the end just makes it more efficient at I tyrannizing mean, you. 
a lot of a lot of Libertarian Party people were really upset that the Libertarian Party ran Bob Barr for president in two thousand eight, and I actually voted for him. He's the last person I voted for for president. You didn't write Ron Paul in in two thousand eight. Nope. I really? was newly minted, and I didn't really know what voted was going on. Voted for Bob Barr. <clears throat> well, yeah, see, nobody's you know, perfect. Folks. And it was like it's it was okay. like he was on the ballot in California, and Ron Paul wasn't. And I was like, well, I'm not going to write someone in. I'm going to vote for the guy, you know, that's on the thing <laughs> that they tell me I can. So, but yeah. he's actually, and he's a really, you know, he used to be a neocon, yeah, and then saw the light and changed. And some argue whether or not he changed, or whether he just really wanted to, uh, you know be relevant but um he is actually at least in what he says on his blog is actually way more libertarian than howard stern was with what he was running under yeah but i think the whole party has had to shift more towards anarchism as recently just because it's so much more <laughs> a, a the state's so much more oppressive so we see the problem so much more and, and b i think people are talking about it so much more so do you ever see the robot chicken sketch about the libertarian party uh, uh it shows um it's like f five shots of them doing their you know okay we're gonna we're gonna win this time from like 1971 to like now <laughs> and in the beginning it's like you know two fairly young guys with their hot wives and uh there's about you know 50 people in the room and they're all cheering loudly and it goes on like the guys get older the wives leave them the number of people in the room goes down to like five. And in the last scene, like one of them just shoots himself in the head on stage. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, man. I mean, it's a silly concept to begin with. And I guess maybe people didn't realize that at the beginning, but it's almost like getting a band together so you can sing songs about how great, about how much you hate music and how you never want to yeah. sing or play instruments. Although I think, it it was historically important because I think it opened up the conversation and if it had to go that way, whatever, you know, but I, and you'd probably argue even that, but I'll say that even if that was true, the, they have become it's so a dead not, end now. It's a dead yeah. end. Yeah. It's a dead end. And they tend to run people like Howard Stern who are idiots or like the guy they ran in Wyoming for governor who, you know, was a racist and not libertarian. And even he told me personally, I'm not a libertarian, but blah, 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 blah. You know, uh, so. I know who you're talking about. He's somebody else we've made fun of on the cast before for horrible. Yeah, things, that long-haired weirdo Mike something. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. No, I thought it was a different guy. Okay, maybe there's more than one. But uh, yeah, man, and they they ran Gary Johnson for president, and I was really oh, sad not, that some. Actually, are you talking about the guy that's in the Guns and Weed movie? One of the guys in the no. government self defense class. Uh, I forget his name, but I think one of those guys is a guy who ran for governor of Wyoming at some point. Uh, under Libertarian no, I'm not, Party. I'm not, I'm not talking about and got three, Let's, and let's got, just get off it. I was talking right. about somebody else. But um, but yeah, man. I mean, they ran Gary Johnson in 2012. A guy who didn't even probably know who Murray Rothbard was. And they ran him He's, against Ron Paul. Basically. Uh, yeah. You know? Yeah. yeah I, I mean, I suppose they did. I think they tried to get Ron Paul to be on the Libertarian ticket, though. I think some people in the Libertarian Party were trying to – were asking Ron Paul. And I think Ron Paul didn't to, because he wanted to be in the debates. Mm -hmm. I really think so. I mean, I think that was the yeah. smart thing to do. And Gary Johnson had some real half half measure uh, th endorsement. Like he endorsed Ron Paul in the primary, and then said, "Like I won't endorse him if he wins the primary because I'm going to run against him." <laughs> yeah, 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 man. I don't know. I guess maybe Gary Johnson's heart's in the right place. Maybe it is. He it's just a litter seems, bug. He seems kind of uneducated on on how it all works or how it all should work. Uh, hey, or how it, I guess I guess not how it all should work because we're not centrally planning things, but how it all shouldn't work, which is exactly how it works now. Let's play some music and uh, take a little uh, breather. Yeah, here. I think I need a refreshing beverage. So, so. why don't you play the um, play a song and then play the Christmas ad? No, I'm gonna play the Christmas ad first. Okay, it's a minute thirty, and then I'll play a song. What song are you gonna play? Uh, I don't know. I'll figure it out while I'm playing the ad. But here's the ad. All right. Admit it. You hate shopping for Christmas. You do. It's a hassle coupled with a burden, mechanically checking off friends, relatives, and coworkers from your list. You're probably not even religious, but if you are, is buying your cousin some little made-in-China piece of plastic really celebrating the birth of your savior? This holiday season, why buy gifts for friends and relatives? 
Most of them are status anyway. You should send that money to the Freedom Fiends instead. The Freedom Fiends will use your money to help spread education of horizontal liberation throughout the world. If you want to help provide inoculation from indoctrination, go to freedomfiends.com and click on the spinning coin on any post to send your money to the fiends instead. Because buying crap for unappreciative statist relatives won't get your name on the golden floppy disk of redemption. And if you must shop for Christmas, please do it through the Freedom Fiends Amazon link over on the right side of freedomfiends.com. It won't cost you anything extra, and Amazon will save you the danger of holiday drive-by stabbings at your local mall. Amazon pretty much sells everything you can buy on this earth, except for guns and weed. But they do sell the DVD, Guns and Weed, The Road to Freedom. So get that for your gun-hating stoner brother or neocon gun nut dad. They'll thank you for it. That's freedomfiends.com. Ah, uh, Dirty Bomb Entertainment, DJ Subsonic, Nima V, the lyrical terrorist. Y'all know how we do. You know, I own myself. Nobody else can tell me what to do. I hope you feel the same way. Just like Pimp C say, they can lock my body, but them hoes can't take my mind. Never that. It's getting thicker than dreadlocks They treat us like we dreads God don't wanna see the feds Pop will be the one that they stop Don't get in trouble Cause I talk shit to their mascot Freaking busy bodies Need to go and buy an ascot Telling me you own me Then making sure I'm taxed out Maxed out Deep indebted from an easy credit That the Fed embedded Then they better that I'll be copacetic If they were the medic But forget it The people are getting pissed Blowing up like some unleaded They won't control and fed it But y'all know that smells faded Like the that we're headed to if they don't let me do me and you do you and all the guns in the gun for me won't amount to a 22 if they keep on stomping all on them and number two and we don't even need you take your welfare and your brain washing free school that y'all are so see-through easy to see you is see true nobody owns me uh, y'all haters don't cut. i own me yeah. so back the fuck off no. nobody owns me no y'all haters don't uh, i me. Yeah, so back the fuck off. I make my own rules, take my own dues. You ain't in my shoes, no, you ain't get to choose. I ain't paying dues, I pay them for myself. Don't expect shit from me, and I ain't need your help. In case you didn't know, this song is for the parasites, the feeders that bleed us and treat us like they're the handed with the dice. No utopian paradise. Do we have from any planet? The world too complex for any man to comprehend. All the supply and again, all the demand. When the few control the view, their mistakes are multiplied The decision should be ours, like our bodies, let's take back our lives Only a slave if you submit, and y'all know I got some fight And this ain't racist, it's for blacks, whites, and Asians Middle Eastern people, Latino, and everyone that wants to be free So, believe and let it slide, if you're emo, I never sign no social contract I'm about to have to repo myself, for my health and my wealth Put your bills back on the shelf, Capitol Hill can go to hell we should put them folks in jail We could live our lives ourselves Nobody owns me uh, Y'all haters don't yeah, I own me yeah, So back the fuck off Nobody owns me No, Y'all haters don't uh, I own me yeah, So back the fuck off I make my own rules Take my own tools You ain't in my shoes No you ain't get to choose I ain't pay you dues I pay them for myself Don't expect shit from me And I ain't need your help uh, I knock them out the mouth and name cause in my free free Could be who say so I take aim at tier in free free Branches, branches that act just like geriatric fitters, fitters, knees, knees But really you'll get beat up if you don't follow that either Log, log, living, living, worse, worse, rea, rea But where can I go if this whole world is socialist? Though we know that it fell for the Soviets since 1984 People please notice this tax, tax, feed it Time to overthrow the ticks and send the declaration Slip, slip, shit, shit, so choose to be a free man, governments were over it, governments were over it. Nobody owns me, y'all, y'all haters don't. I, I own me, yeah, so back the fuck off. Nobody owns me, y'all, y'all don't, don't. Uh, I own me, yeah, so.
so back the fuck off. Take my, take my rules, rules. Take my tools, tools. You ain't in my shoes, ain't, ain't shoes, shoes. I ain't pay you dues, pay and pay and for myself. Back, back, me, me, and I ain't need your help. Yeah. Gun Training with the Non-Aggression Principle, Volume 1. Basic Handgun and Rifle with Jared Waltz. First rule of being alive is you own yourself. A groundbreaking approach to firearms and self-defense training. Beautifully filmed and easy to understand instructions make this one a must-have. Gun Training with the Non-Aggression Principle, Volume 1. New DVD from Michael W. Dean. Available on Amazon. Your house is This is Michael Dean from the Freedom Fiends. I've been on the World Wide Web since its inception in 1994. I've tried dozens of web providers in that time. The only one that hasn't broken my heart is HostGator. HostGator has unlimited server space, unlimited throughput, and a guaranteed uptime of better than 99.9% .9 for only $150 a year. You can pay a little less elsewhere, but you'll pull out your hair dealing with anyone else. HostGator has great service and unlimited tech support only a phone call away 24-7, 365. HostGator is where pros like the Fiends host because we know how to do it right. Go to FreedomFiends.com and click on the HostGator affiliate link on the right sidebar to sign up today. Yo. What it do? Uh, yeah. Yeah. It do. It do. It do. It do and it be. It so, sure um, be. yeah, that was I Own Me. That was I Own Me by Neva. Ne blah, blah, blah. That was I Own Me by Nima Vidati going all the way back to 2009. Yeah. And I was chopping it up a little bit with just. I heard that. I thought it was a mistake at first, but it sounded cool and it kept happening. So I knew it was you doing your, <laughs> you doing your magic. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. True that. So uh, the market always finds a way. You see this headline? I posted the link. Uh, drug mm -hmm. smugglers yep. shoot drugs across border with cannon. <laughs> Isn't that the best thing ever? Yeah. Yeah. That's a freedom fix if I ever heard one. And, yeah. you know, it's not like this is the only time we've seen this. They also, uh, what, dig tunnels underground. Uh, like Jay-Z says, we getting money up under you. Do um, they have drones yet? I know they have submarines. Um, Who, the cartels? Yeah. I mean, drones, <laughs> you know, not for defense, but for uh, sending things across borders. It seems like it uh, would work. I don't know, man. I, I guess... Drones don't have a big carrying capacity. Yeah, that's right? what our friend, who's a model airplaner, said. But yeah, uh, you could probably do it with balloons if the wind was growing, going the right direction. Like maybe some concentrated liquid cocaine or something. Yeah, but this is—they're using a cannon and shooting, you know, <laughs> can of soup size projectiles full of drugs like five hundred yards over the border, and then right, someone collects right. them on the other side. Yeah, and I'm sure they got some nice trigonometry or trajectory some rocket some science nice math going it ain't on rocket yeah, science oh wait it is rocket, rocket science. science yeah <laughs> yeah yeah <coughs> excuse me sorry all in the furtherment of um of meeting human desires right so <sighs> That's that's who would build a road to be somebody who would meet human desires right who who would supply the drugs anybody who can meet those desires however they can meet those desires whether it's digging a tunnel underground or shooting them with a cannon somebody probably find a way to like make roads by shooting something out of a cannon you know like in the simpsons where homer wants to be an inventor and invents a shotgun that puts makeup on a woman and he tries it on his wife <laughs> and she's like homer you have it set on whore although it kind of yeah, more like right. clown whore than whore right clown whore yeah well uh, uh or like um like in Sonic the Hedgehog, when you jump in the cannon, it shoots you over half the level, so you would get there faster, right? <laughs> Shoot ourselves out of cannons into houses uh, or, or shopping walls. Yeah, I mean, obviously that's kind of silly, but the point is, by any means necessary, the market will take care of human desires. Um, and, and it's not the market if they're violent means, so that that means is excluded, uh, you know, through the philosophy of it, but. Um, it, 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 things like this are, are a beautiful example. Um, another example is is 
prison, right? People still get drugs and things that they want in prison. Um, and back to the whole uh, um, Holocaust is people in their um, – their ghetto, not their ghettos, but what what came next? The the concentration camps. Um, you know they would there would be people who would collect things and trade them, and uh, there were little economies on what little resources they had. There was even a market at play amongst the people in concentration camps. Um, yeah. Who would you know hoard some little pieces of food and and, and uh, trade them for favors and things like that. Uh, so the market will always find a way to meet those desires, no matter what. Yeah, yeah. That that's the true through hail leader snow. Post post office workers don't have any in- incentive to do it like that because they all get paid twenty five dollars an hour. They can't lose their jobs, uh, and they get retirement. So Is they're that not going to they be get. The- they get twenty five dollars an hour. They get a crap ton. Yeah, I think the full time ones get something in that range. Wow, for walking, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. for taking a walk, for for exercising every day. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, I, I, I mean, I, that's what I've heard at least because I've got a family member who's, uh, I guess I've got a couple family members who are postal workers, uh, and they do pretty well for themselves. Um, and <laughs> one of them at least isn't. Uh, well, I guess I don't want to say that, but uh, you shouldn't get much a Christmas more, much present. more money than than I think they could make in the in, in the market. Much should, more money. Don't, than, don't than get I them would a Christmas present. Making. Shun them, <laughs> or else give them like a burned copy of Guns and Weed: The Road to Freedom. Ah. Uh, yeah, yeah, they just say I'm crazy. That that's the problem with with horizontal liberation of some people is is when you're that far gone, all you immediately dismiss it as crazy if it's not something that uh, Fox News told you or something that CNN or Rachel Maddow told but you. But the fiends is a gift to the future, and that is the name of today's episode because we are doing this. You know, they always say, "Think of the children." We're thinking of the children. I'm hoping yeah. that somebody is still torrenting this or, you know, whatever the technology is then, you know, when kids who are being born right now are old enough to listen, which is about eight years old. Mm. I hope for more than that, though. I think my the loftiest I get is is I hope that uh, in the future this stuff will be so common sense that they, people won't even need the fiends anymore. It'll just yeah. be like, oh, yeah, they're, they're saying the basic premise of our world. And then, um, and then and they'll then, look back on us for reference, maybe. But it no, they'll be look like up, a, they'll, they'll look back on us as the way the way that people now look back on obsolete philosophers like Thomas Jefferson, and there'll be fiends humpers. There'll be <laughs> like people will be people will be so advanced in twenty or thirty years that like people who still quote the fiends or listen to the fiends or try to spread the fiends, they'll be like, really. Man, we're so beyond that. That is so right. square. I hope. Right. I hope. I would. That's that's the only acceptable. Like to me, that's not the only acceptable. But that that is a reality of us being irrelevant and not liked. That I would dig. <laughs> that you would dig. Yeah. 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 Me too. Um, you, you ever see the happens. the South Park where, um, Cartman really wants this new video game. That's coming uh, out next week. The Wii. He, can't, he, he, yeah. he wants a Wii, so he freezes himself. <laughs> yeah, and he wakes up in the future, and like he gets a Wii at an antique store, and there's no like technology they can plug it into because yeah. you know yeah. everything's advanced so much. I, right. I right. I don't think that'll happen though with spoken audio as MP3s because it's so backward compatible, you know. Yeah, and yeah. and there will always be some hacker who will make it like an emulator to play it. You know, like now, right. you know, you can get little, like Windows emulators to play Pong on your computer. Well, there will be someone who will make like an, em- an emulator for an MP3 player that will work in your, you know, whatever's embedded in your brain mm-hmm. that acts as the computer then. Hell, much more than Pong. And, and that's the thing about MP3s is, yeah, they are digital. But as long as it's just ones and zeros, you can do it. Like, uh like I, I play Sega Saturn on an emulator. Any video game system in the world you want to play, you can play. Uh, you just got to get a hold of the ones and zeros that are the program of the game. Uh, and because MP3 is nothing but ones and zeros in a file, um, as long as people have computers, they'll be be able to to listen to them. I would imagine. There was this whole thing a few years ago <laughs> of uh, companies that make recording equipment selling this what they called was a new technology that they called future proof recording. And it was basically, mm. it was this really weird, it was like one bit recording, but it was with a really high, um, like a really high sampling rate. Like mm. it was some weird math that 
that I didn't see the advantage of, and I underst- I think they were pulling the wool over people's eyes. It was um, basically they said that you know the technology now will be obsolete, and 16-bit, 44.1 hertz, you know, joint stereo MP3s or waves will be completely obsolete. Now, what that's not taking into account is the range of human hearing. I mean, literally, mm-hmm. a 16-bit 44.1 wave file is has the maximum of what 98% of humans can hear. Now, they mm-hmm. do record in studios at 96K instead of or 96-bit instead of 24-bit, but it's really kind of an emperor's new clothes things, and a lot of engineers who say they can hear the difference probably can't, and engineers might be able to hear the difference, but the average person can't. Now, right. the average person can hear the difference between a crappy recording with today's technology and a good recording with today's technology, like the way people say the fiends sound really good, and they're not necessarily recording engineers, they're just listeners. Mm-hmm. Right. And they may not be able to say why it sounds better. They may not even say this sounds better than that, uh, but they will listen to the thing that sounds better than the thing right. that doesn't. Subconsciously, so, even. Uh, I just posted a link to the to a thread about one bit advantage future proof recording, and it was it was total horse crap. You know, it's not like um, protocols like HDMI versus you know USB two or USB three, and it's not like mechanical differences and uh delivery format differences like you know vhs versus dvd where there is a difference it's literally like if you're going to make recordings that advance beyond you know 16 bit uh 44.1 hertz waves which is what we make our mp3s from um you're going to have to do something to the human ear and brain so uh we're pretty much future proof i would say and we are a gift well, to the future i i think the term future proof is uh specious yeah i i think that that's a red flag for bs because thank uh, you who knows who knows what future proof is um because i'm thinking yeah maybe with digital stuff but why does everything there's no there's no guarantee that everything will always be digital and computers. I mean, it seems to me like the next step is finding out how your brain moves neurons to make what sounds like sounds and what yeah, looks like Yeah, but images. I'm going to resist anything like that because that's going to involve interfacing electronically with the human brain. And, you know, I don't like the way the government spies on what I search on the web now. You think I'm going to let them plug into my brain? Why, do you, why does the government have to do it? You're such a Luddite. <laughs> yeah. I mean, there's, a, <laughs> there there's examples of this in, in, in Beezer's work on um, in Quantum Vibe. Uh, and I think maybe an escape on here. Although I Libertarian fiction that, but... says you're wrong, Michael. But, you know, <laughs> fiction is often the blueprint for uh, for fact. I mean, the, the cell phone is based on the Star Trek communicator, and uh-huh, the uh-huh. iPad is based on whatever those you know the the thing the doctor would hold whatever vision have. yeah uh, jobs had when he was tripping on acid um when and- he's tripping on acid and getting caught for basically being a pirate by selling boxes <laughs> that allowed you to make free phone calls uh-huh. and then saying someday i will use my technology to crush competition in the market with the same <laughs> methods that are being used on me now that i don't like <laughs> Right, which again was the state that allowed him to do that, not anything else. But uh, you know, his answer would probably be, "Well, Nima and Michael from Beyond the Grave, I'm there are two <laughs> jobs. Well, Nima and Michael, you know, I grew up. Mm, I had yeah. to become a statist. He was a really weird statist, though. I mean, people have actually called him libertarian, but because he did things like drove his Mercedes without a license plate, you know. Um, but that's not libertarian when you're acting the way he is. Like, you know, well, the thing is, with all his patent stuff. He would probably argue, well, I had to because I'm a businessman and, and I may not like the rules, but I have to play the game by them. I didn't write the rules, which is I, – I think it's an argument, for, again, for the taking down of the state because if you have a structure of these centrally planned rules and regulations, people will still seek their own best interests. And if they have to use the rules obnoxiously to seek their own self self-interest they will but if there aren't those tools of the state um then they'll have to seek their own self-interest peaceably and voluntarily i really wonder in the lack of intellectual property right laws where society would be at right now you know a lot of people say we'd be living in ditches poking berries up our nose to survive but i think the opposite i think that 
hobbyists would still do all the research and would be, you know, not quelled by not being able to use other technology to the point where all drugs would cost eight cents a dose, cancer would be cured, we'd be flying in cars, <laughs> and the government would be completely irrelevant. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and there was actually some um, some amateurs discovered a star recent or something. What was it? Uh, I can't find it. I have so many notes. I don't care about this crap. But people do, you know, <laughs> scientists do things. I mean, Kevin McKernan, without government funding or, you know, with private funding, like uh, sequenced the DNA, the genome of the marijuana plant. And he was the first yep. to do it. And he's a Fiend fan. And we actually took him from, and it's a very common journey, um, Ron right. Paul to Alex Jones to the Fiends. And that's work that not necessarily. I mean, the government would have never approved funding for anything like that uh, in any kind of no. They would have approved plan thing. They would have approved it to secretly do it and then patent it. Ah, <laughs> and then and then they charge anyone who grows pot with patent violations mm -hmm. on top of whatever else. Mm, yeah, yeah, exactly. They'd use they it actually, to the they public's actually, disadvantage. Well, the United States government actually filed a patent on. Uh, medical <laughs> marijuana at some yeah. point, which is right. really bizarre. It hasn't been used for anything to crush anybody yet, but uh, it could be. Yeah, yeah. But, uh, yeah, man, I, I, I agree with you completely. And um, I, I do I do think that uh, sans all of this regulation, we would probably be already at the point where uh, recording technology that we use would be obsolete and, and there would literally be like a plug-in that your neurons would, would hear – what happened in the room exactly as, as a human ear would have heard it if it were there. Well, um, you know, that would all actually work if there was Hassel Doctrine. And if anyone wants to look up on the glossary what Hassel Doctrine <laughs> is, basically it's, uh, it's an extrapolation of the Second Amendment. It's basically anybody can use any gun to shoot anybody who tries to take their rights away, you know, which is what mm -hmm. they were going for with the Second Amendment, but they watered it down to uh, get all the different states and their different levels of statism to sign on. You know, the See, it seems like the, colonies. the important thing for that to work, though, is is getting people to recognize first what is aggression and not. Because right now, um, people don't recognize government aggression as bad or even aggression. Or as aggression, yeah. Uh, they don't even recognize it as aggression. Um, that's that's why it's legitimate. That's why they legitimize it, and the fact that it's legitimate is the main difference. So if, if people can. If we got everybody to understand that taxation was theft, or or a big majority, or even a, a big big minority, um, to see that taxation was theft and that law enforcement was the slaves whipping the backs of the public, um, I mean, we'd be we'd be pretty much there, right? That's the speaking main of, thing. That's speaking the main of work. taxation being theft. Um, anybody out there who smokes, who buys packs of cigarettes instead of rolling your own or growing your own or whatever, I noticed this week with the new carton I bought. You know, cigarettes have always had the tax stamp paid thing. They've always had uh -huh. the um, the UPC code on the side. But on these Marlboros I'm looking at, next to the UPC code, now there's also a QR code. You know, like those ones, those things, those weird new Does ones. it go to like an image of a decrepit lung or something? I don't know. I don't have a scanner for it. Uh, I don't have a cell phone that can do that or I don't want to install the crap that does it. But I'm wondering it's just if it's an app, and you can keep it off well, all the time. I'm, if anybody out there can do that and scan it and let right. me know what it is, do you have yeah. it on yours? I do, I do. But um, I'm not going to buy a pack of cigarettes. I guess um, I'll. I wonder. Well, you could do it in a store, probably. Well, no, nah, because it was actually covered by a dot on the plastic. I had to pull the plastic off it to do it to look to see it. Ah. Uh -huh. um, I'm wondering, and maybe they cover it with a dot for some reason, but I'm wondering if it's just replicating the information in the barcode or if it's something new, like, you know, goes to a picture of a rotten lung or something. Mm -hmm. hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Because there was that, that, <laughs> somebody wasn't said it downloads Stutnex when you scan. <laughs> Stuxnet, yeah. yeah. Well, wasn't there a law saying that? I think a judge struck this down, but there was some regulation that was going to go into effect to where uh, cigarette sellers had to put some kind of obnoxious big image on the box. They do that in uh, England uh, now. They do that already do in England. And bef like well, an image time, of what what tobacco does. Literally, to you or literally, something. like someone smoking through a hole in their in their lung. They have that on mm -hmm. the cigarette packs now. When I was wow. in England. Last time I was in England, or the only time I was in England, was with the DIY or Die movie tour when I was touring Lefty Anarchist Squats. Um, it was, it wasn't that bad yet. It was in 2005, but it the warning said, you know, instead of warning, cigarette smoking can. What does it say here? It says, um, 
Quitting smoking now greatly reduces serious risks to your health. And it's in tiny gold letters that are hard to read because they're on white. Um, in England, it was giant white block letters on black background. And it said, warning, cigarette smoking will kill you or can kill you. What is wow. that, man? That's my phone. Hmm. Sorry. That well, I want to talk about... I want to talk about lefty anarchists. I've been reaching across the aisle to lefty can, can anarchists. I, can I stay? Can we stay on cigarette topic for a little sure, bit longer? Sure. I was curious, and I tried to look it up just now, but um, I, I'm so upset that nobody sells loose cigarettes anywhere. Like did I think that it's illegal some places. Yeah, yeah I'm looking at this thing. It looks oh, like in, in San Chicago or in, in San Illinois. In San Francisco, every Korean grocery in San Francisco when I lived there sold Lucy's for like 25 cents. Lucy's. Yeah, that's what they call them. Yeah. And uh, there was a place in Wyoming, a liquor store I used to go to that would sell Lucy's. And uh, it was a great thing to behold. <laughs> yeah, basically a law against that. I mean, that's that's a law against poor people is what that is. That's We don't want... It really is. We, yeah. You know, it's, it's, it's one step away from outlawing feeding homeless people. It really is, which, yeah. you know, yeah. New York City's done and a lot of other places have done. It's also, it's a law against people who want to quit, right? I mean, forcing people to buy 20 cigarettes every time they have a nicotine You know, craving. I wouldn't be surprised that's if... That's anti-productive for the, be, the nannies, even. The tobacco lobbies probably had something to do with those laws. Yeah, I bet, I bet. Secretly. And I think the tech... It, it looks like there's... um, And then they get... A, but then they get signed and passed by politicians who believe that it's an anti-smoking law when it's really yeah. a pro-smoking law. Well, I, I did a um, computer kill Flanders search, and the first thing that comes up uh, for uh, the, the the question was, why can't I buy loose cigarettes? The first thing that comes up is um, a city of Chicago press release of of the businesses they're going to close down, and it looks like they want to. What the first one is is for selling loose cigarettes with no stamps. Selling unstamped cigarettes, so I guess that's that's how they justify not selling Lucy's, is because there's no tax stamp. Well, the on tax the is already paid cigarette. on them, though. Although it's I guess, true, but there's I no guess stamp it could on be. It, so I guess what there's probably some situation where somebody bought them cheap without a tax stamp on an Indian reservation, and then took them to the city, and then sold them to Korean grocers who sell them loose. Mm, yeah, I, and I guess that's the whole point of the tax stamp in the first place, right? Is so that the government controls the point of sale and how it's sold. Well, if they think that they can print, you know, micro serial numbers on bullets, wouldn't it be a lot easier to print a serial number or a tax stamp on the side of a cigarette <laughs> with carcinogenic it, ink, with radioactive with ink, <laughs> that puts the Stuxnet net virus into your brain? Right, right. To listen to the right. MP3s you're hearing. Yeah, I, I suppose it would, but again, because it's not a market uh, it, that that controls this, it's a state that controls this. Um, you don't have that kind of responsiveness. You know, there's no market because people have guns pointed at them to keep them from selling loose cigarettes. Entrepreneurs can't go out there and be like, "Well, hey, I make a bunch of money if I sell. You know, I buy a pack for five bucks or less because they're getting it at cost or or whatever their cost is as opposed to what they sell it to you for." And I, I'm buying a pack for five. I'm selling each loose for 75 cents or whatever. I'm, I'm making a hell of a profit on this. Um, you don't let that voluntary interaction take place. And as a result, the entrepreneur who works at the liquor store or the convenience store is poorer because he misses out on that opportunity cost. Uh, and your average smoker or your poor smoker instead has to buy a whole pack of uh, Paul Mall or whatever cheap they can get and get a whole pack and your person who doesn't want to buy a whole pack but just wants to enjoy a cigarette once in a while has to buy a whole pack uh, it seems like it's a lose 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 situation all right I got a joke yeah. okay police officer pulls a man over sir I noticed you were swerving and driving erratically man says yes I was a while back I noticed a man with a gun following me it made me nervous Officer says, what did this man look like? What kind of car was he driving? Man says, he was driving a black and white Crown Victoria, and he looked like you. <laughs> and, you know, if you tell that joke to an anarchist, they get it before you tell the punchline. Yeah, but yeah, I knew, I knew where you're going It's a good that. one for statists. Yeah, yeah. To help uh, smooth the road to their, uh, their enlightenment, ideally. Well, speaking of which, I want to talk about lefty anarchists. Okay. And, re and reaching across the aisle to them. Uh, which really I think is the only aisle. There's only two aisles that are legitimate to reach across. One is anarchist to minarchist, uh, you know, reaching to pull them to our side of the aisle, not to work with them. And the um, other is leftist anarchist to anarcho-capitalist. Anarcho yeah, and I do think 
uh, they would argue with me on this generally, probably, I guess I'm speaking to them collectively, but they ha- <laughs> some of them have argued with me on this, where I say that they aren't true anarchists and we are, and we'll bring them over to the, the final, you know, the last mile. They, they do the same thing to us, though. I know, I know they do. You guys think people can own property? God, know, you're not anarchists. <laughs> and, you know, I've had a problem with any dis- most discussions I've had with any syndicalist anarchist or lefty anarchist or commie anarchist because... Uh, they basically, I don't know how they're going to initiate their stateless society without pointing a gun at me because yeah. I am not going to li- you You're know, not I'm give not up your property. Yeah. Whatever, you know, voluntary reindoctrination they want to have out there in the world. I'm either not going to listen to it or I'm, when I listen to it, I'm not going to be swayed to, yes, I should open up my door and let stinky, you know, stinky lefty anarchists come in my house all day long and use my podcasting equipment while I'm trying to sleep <laughs> and let them camp in my backyard and let them live in frolic in my many acres, my many yeah. 0. Yeah. 0.02 acres. And, and and some would maybe say, well, it's not like that, man. I mean, you can own your like toothbrush and your computer and that, but, but I, I don't see any consistency in where the line is drawn. And maybe I haven't read enough of it. And I, I know I haven't because I haven't, but, you uh, won't. So yeah, and I probably won't. Um, but I'd like, to, I'd love it if somebody would help enlighten me on it. But from what I see, that that's the main problem with with lefty anarchists is is they don't, don't take property ownership. And property ownership to me is a natural uh, outgrowth of the fact that you own yourself. Because you own yourself, you own whatever you make and whatever you acquire through voluntary means. Uh, whatever it is, as long as it's voluntary, you own it because your own human action caused it to be yours. Yeah, but um, I don't need fiend I don't need to read it because I've absorbed fiend it. I've been around a lot of them. We got fiend a fiend fiend caller here. Maybe it's a lefty fiend. anarchist. This could be good. Hello, fiend. Who are you? Hey, it's Dalton. Hey, Dalton. What's, What's up, up, man? I don't I don't know, man. What's up? I I randomly decided to call because like uh, I I can't listen to you guys while I'm driving anymore because you're not on no agenda anymore. And I was like, I wonder what. Michael and Nima are up to. No, so I randomly called. Why couldn't you listen to? Why could you listen to them while driving, but you can't listen to us while driving? It's the same technology. Um, maybe I just haven't figured it out yet. Yeah. But, um, yeah. It, it's probably more likely, but I have a little a little app where I can search um a list of streaming internet radio stations. And can then you? I'm not on the list. Can you okay. manually add one in? You know, I was thinking about that, but uh, that would take more attention than I'm willing to give while driving in traffic. Can your app can can your app go to uh, can your app deal with stuff from Apple streaming uh, iTunes streaming radio? Because we are on that. Uh, I I really don't know. I don't know. You know, if this was somebody okay. we didn't know and like, like Dalton, I'd hang up on him right now. I'd be like, <laughs> so you just decided to call in and interrupt us without knowing what we're talking about. All right. So what are you talking about? Well, we're talking anarchists. About, we're going to talk about the oh. cool. The well, we'll let you stay because you made a really cool okay. image that we're going to use for today's podcast. It's the clean all the things lady saying, uh, "Build all the roads." So we'll let you stay uh, on yeah. for, well for a minute. What do you think about lefty anarchists? Um, what do you think about the problem think, of of lefty anarchists in today's society? I think I think the majority of lefty anarchists are, are well meaning, but. Um, Kind of like some anarchists, I think they haven't quite gotten over the violence bug. Yeah, well, yeah. I wouldn't necessarily paint them as violent, although I have been encouraging them to use uh, PGP encryption, like we use, because they seem to be more of a target for the state than we are. Whether they're violent or not, yeah. most of them are not violent. But I think the state basically looks at them as like Abby Hoffman, Bernadette Dorn types, and the state looks at us as like bow tie wearing economist types. Yeah, I mean, uh, there's there's a common joke between uh, lefty anarchists and anarcho capitalists that anarcho capitalists only exist on the internet. So I Ooh. I think that may be for the reason why the government does more against the lefties Ouch. because they <laughs> tend to do more physically, at least. Well, I think they tend to. I think they tend to go out in the street and yell more, whereas we tend to like watch it from a powerful telescope from our many acres and go, ha 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 ha. (laughs) 
Well, I mean, there are a lot of ANCAPs with volunteers doing stuff in Keene, and, you know, they're getting a lump, lump on the head. So I yeah. think it's just a matter of mm-hmm. whether or not you go out and do stuff, really. Yep. Yep. Well, I've been trying to reach across the aisle to them. Uh, my buddy Krizzle, who makes our buttons, is an anarcho syndicalist. And I actually designed some buttons for him and said he could use them and not pay me, just make them and sell them because that's the way to get stuff done. And they are, na- they, it's the name of a Fiends episode. It's State Speech is Hate Speech. And he made some that uh, I wouldn't wear because they have Hitler on them. You know, it says state speech, and it's got a picture of uh, the U.S. Capitol building, and then it says is hate speech, and it's got Hitler saluting. Um, I don't wear stuff. I don't wear stuff with Hitler because people really misunderstand it. I used to wear a Nazi punks fuck off banner with a swastika with a line through it. It Ah. came, it came, the armband came in the first pressing of that Dead Kennedy single. Um, And I used to wear it when I was, you know, 19 year old punk rocker and like people would just see the swastika and they'd go, Ooh, a Nazi, what are you doing? You know, they wouldn't see the red line through it. They didn't get it. But, uh, so I designed some, some other ones for him that are just straight text, but, uh, I hope you make some, and, and I told him to make two designs, one black and yellow and one red and yellow, you know, one for the lefties and one for the righty, you know, not the righties, but one for the anarcho syndicalists and one for the anarcho capitalists and he did and it's pretty awesome like i told him the idea and the next day he had him for sale up on his site which i think is pretty cool right yeah you know what that reminds me of um not too long ago on reddit somebody posted that they had made a uh, a little voluntary to be lapel pin and they would wear it around all day and they actually got into conversations with people like in gas stations and just you know wherever wherever he would go people would be like what's that thing and then he could talk to them about voluntarism so stuff like that does work you know uh so if you have fiends buttons wear them yep and All you uh, fiends out there yeah and i'm about to order some more i was going to have a pregame show with nima but uh maybe after you get off the phone i'll do it live on here because i know how nima loves to talk financing on the fiends live because <laughs> we are the most transparent cool. podcast in the world um i'm gonna let you go here you got anything else left to say any follow-up uh, closing arguments oh uh, i I just wanted to thank you for uh, plugging um, the kind of state on Facebook. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. I appreciate that. Cool, man. I'll we'll you guys go. Figure out how to get us live streaming. Uh, if you want, you can IM me later about it, and I'll offer suggestions. Yeah, I'll I would say know. just go to the website and click on the listen now. That'll take you straight to our streaming li- link if you've yeah. got a browser on yeah. your smartphone. That would probably thing. be the easiest way to do it. That's yeah. actually what I, I do. I do that on my phone, but nothing happens. Like it started playing, like the counter, you know, the timer started counting for the the length of the audio and all that, but no sound came out. So I, huh. I just kind of figure out why not. Well, if all. if you go go to the link that says streaming audio below that, that's got the picture of the chick, and it goes to uh-huh. actually like right above her on the front page. There's four little icons. One is for Windows Media Player. One is for um, QuickTime. One is for Real Audio, and one is for something else and Winamp and one of those four will probably work on your phone. It's an Android phone, right? That's right. Uh, yeah, I'd try the Winamp one first, but try all four of them. Okay. Yep. All right. All right, man. Take Thanks, care. Man. Yep. Bye-bye. Bye. Peace. Yep. Steve Jobs is rolling over in his grave. Android? No. <laughs> Although this is the rare case where it seems like the Apple product that you use, the iPhone, can actually do it better than Android. It's usually not. I don't that use way. an iPhone. I've got I've got an Android. Uh huh. And I and I love my Android. Uh huh. Most part. Uh, but okay. So back to the lefties. I feel like their main the, the main problem to me is they don't understand how private property and anarchy or freedom are the same thing they blame corporations without realizing corporations right. as an as a tyrannical thing as they are now would not exist in the lack right. of government right and i f- i feel like that that that's the same problem lefties in general have so yeah it's just taking the state out of it uh but it's they don't realize that if they take the state out of it that's not a problem Right, right. Well, <laughs> I think it's, it's a general economic. I don't want to say ignorance because I don't want to hate on our brethren, but I feel, but I don't want to say stupidity either. But I feel like it's a lack of education about economics that leads to these things. Like uh, the same guy, I took a ride home from from at work. You know, he was like, "Oh, anarchist, that's cool," and and then he started talking to me like 
about Burning Man, which I guess is some big <laughs> festival that a bunch, of, a bunch of hippies go to. And he was like, he was like, and and nobody has uh, money. They all go, and it's a sharing society. And and you know, some it's people a bombing fill up society. your cups. <laughs> and I was like, well, what what happens if somebody comes and doesn't bring anything and just wants to get all the free booze and drugs and food? And he's like, oh, those are called sparkling ponies or something like that. <laughs> like there was like a name for them. That I, it was like sparkling unicorn. I don't even remember what it was. And I was like, why? Why the etymology? And he, he couldn't give me an answer. He's like, but but yeah, they're, they're just not cool, man. And well, I was Burning, like, okay. Burning Man is not a stateless society. It may look like one on the outskirts, but the people who own the trademark on the name, and yes, I said that right, are actually really litigious about mm-hmm. people make filming media there and selling it. They will mm-hmm. send you lawyer letters and stomp you and say, no, only we have the right to film at Burning Man and sell it. Right, right. But I felt like from what this guy was telling me, his concept of how the world would work in freedom was everybody would just give everybody free stuff all the time. And I was, I was trying to sort of lead him to water and say, okay. I, I said, well, what if somebody brought a bunch of shitty art and that was their contribution? Something that nobody wanted, like a necklace that was just a string and cat Everyone would give him an A it. for effort and go, oh, that's so <laughs> sweet. Here, have the, have the backwash from my homemade mead. <laughs> Maybe. And, you know, I think Maybe. we saw where that ends up in my discussion of that movie about the 60s uh, hippie commune, Mm -hmm. you know, it ends up with centrally planned sex and the artist being told she can't paint because it's too individual. (laughs) And then everyone starves to death during the winter after accidentally killing their cow while deciding what to do with it. Right, right, right. Yeah, yeah. So I I guess they just sort of have the wrong solution to the whole thing because they don't understand that – that ownership of things isn't the problem. And yes, you know, there are big power groups that own most of the wealth in the world, but that's not a problem of ownership. That's a problem of the state. You don't you have know, to remove ownership from life to remove that. You have to remove the state. I really like the term voluntarism as a sort of backdoor to get the anarcho syndicalist interested in anarcho capitalism because the term anarcho capitalism. To most people, pretty much sounds like the two worst things in the world combined. And to anarcho-syndicalists, anarcho-capitalism sounds like taking the best thing in the world and marring it with the worst thing in the world. But Mm. voluntarism is basically the same thing, but it's kind of a backdoor verbal method for getting them to look at it. Yeah. I kind of also like market anarchism. Yeah. But I mean, um, they do like selling. They do like selling yeah. weeds and you know art made out of cat turds. So <laughs> art made out of cat turds. Yeah, yeah. Well, I guess what I was trying to get out with that was the varnished cat turds polished was, to a. Was, to was a getting shimmer. rid of the labor theory of value because I think that that's a big economic misconception that leads people to these lefty kinds of things. The idea that if you put work, something is worth how much work you put into it, which is not true because you it's don't worth make what people will pay for it. It's worth what people will pay for it. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I mean a, a thing – I mean, think about like a smartphone. You know, it's – what what did you pay for your phone? I think like 100 bucks, and then they gave me a $50 rebate, which they actually gave me, which I was really – Yeah, but that involved that a subscription, right? You had – it was to get Two you Two-year contract, you know, yes. Let's so, look at, so let's it look involved at me signing a contract and $100. Let's look at something that's not um, – not attached to upselling you or getting you to to buy. You know, basically what that is is even if you don't have to buy the subscription, it's like uh, you know, they don't make the money selling the the razors; they make the money selling the blades. You know, back before mm-hmm. disposable razors, mm-hmm. it's like they actually lost money selling the thing that holds the blade, but they make up for it in the blades because you have to keep buying them. It's like a well, subscription okay. model. Uh, uh, maybe this is an example and uh, maybe this is what you're trying to get at is um, so there was a laptop that was like top of the line, super fancy, had all the bells and whistles in 2008. Uh, it's never been touched. It's still in the box. Brand new in, in the sense that it is never – human hands have never touched it. It's still in the cellophane. Uh, in 2012 – it's not worth what it was in 2008. Well, let's take something even easier, like that doesn't involve a depreciation by technology advancements. But, you know, an iPhone, everybody wants one, except me. Uh, and they're around 500 bucks. So an iPhone probably costs about $22 to make, you know, with the Chinese slave labor they use. But it's worth 500 bucks because people will pay that for it. Now, uh, what about a really crappy painting that someone lovingly spends a year making 
you know, full time mm-hmm. for a year making that's really right. ugly and nobody wants it. It's not right. worth more than that iPad. It's worth mm-hmm. far less than twenty two bucks, probably. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, the you know the idea that people should be paid that the value assigned to something should be paid uh, by what it takes to make it labor and parts wise is really a um, entitled view. It's a view of the world owes me a living. You know, <laughs> it's yep. not how yep. the world works. It's based on demand. Right. Right. And I think that that's a central uh, problem with um, with any kind of leftist philosophy is I, I feel sh- like it. I actually had an argument on YouTube on the comments of our Guns and Weed movie uh, in the section where someone at the medical marijuana plant in Denver was talking about, you know, and we we make sure that none of the pot costs more than thirty eight dollars an eighth. And someone was like thirty eight dollars an eighth. That's a rip off. These people are capitalists. It costs like a dollar to, to grow an eighth the pot. And I'm like, well, you're not factoring in everything else they do, including dealing with the government regulation and the Which chance Which is a that huge the, cost. And, uh, the, and the chance that the feds could come in and point guns at yeah. their head at any time and steal it all. $38 right, an risk. eighth for pot is pretty reasonable. I mean, it works out to like a dollar a dose, if that. And, you know, I don't like pot, but people who like pot, a dollar a dose is pretty reasonable for what you get out of it. Yeah, yeah. $38 an eighth is, is cheaper than what you even get it for on the streets in most places I've been to. The cheapest I've ever seen an eighth for on the street is like 50 bucks, you know. And it's often not a, a full eighth. You know, and in England, it's probably got ah. thumbtacks and sand and broken glass in it. No, literally, they do that. But, you know, in America, it's probably 80% of an eighth, if that. But when you go to a medical marijuana place, it's absolutely an eighth. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. Um, and, and, and again, the, when we interviewed the guys for the Guns and Weed movie at the dispensary, there was so much startup costs for government permits and stuff that, that is just completely arbitrary and ridiculous. Like you must pay us $10,000 a year just to exist. There was also a lot of just total horseshit coming out of some of the patients' mouths that ended up on the – you know, as pixels on the cutting room floor um, yeah. that we yeah. just couldn't use. Not from the people who owned the place. They were capitalists and they understood it uh, and they yeah. were – really smart people especially the, the one guy i forget his name uh austin but yeah. um there was so much stuff from the people we interviewed that just didn't work of people saying like well you know i mean the government should give us free marijuana because we're sick and blah, 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 blah. <laughs> and all this uber well, state well, stuff that just blew me and worst, like i always vote Democrat. I, heard. I, Go ahead. I, I you know and i always vote democrat because the republicans want to take pot away and i'm like well mm. so do the democrats but what was the worst you heard uh, and because I guess because it was the most common was that um, why screw with us? Why not spend all of that time uh, and money and the, resources the going dealers. after the, the meth heads? Yeah, yeah. And actually, the owner said something like that too, or or uh, not quite that, but you know, I mean, I said to him while I was sitting talking to him, I was like, um, you know, uh, I think all drugs should, you know, I said, do you think all drugs should be legal? I was kind of pre-interviewing him for the next segment. And he's like. I know you do, and he laughed. <laughs> yeah, I remember that. Yeah. Well, it's like if you view the government as a gang of thieves writ large, as Rothbard has instructed us to do. I sound like I'm in a religious meeting when I say that. But uh, just just do it, right? If you view the government as a gang of thieves, uh, imagine if they came to your house and were going to kill you, and, and you were like judging them for it in your head, and you're like, man, this is just so fucked up. I can't believe they're going to kill me. You wouldn't think, I just... I wish they would go kill somebody else. Why don't they go kill Sarah down the street? She's a bitch or something like that. I wouldn't think that. I'd be like, wow, why Why don't they just stop going around murdering and killing people? Yeah, and the um, the medical marijuana being becoming legal in Colorado way before they legalized pot in Colorado to some extent, um, actually they, they took the taxes from it and used it to do more policing on yeah. not legal marijuana. Mm-hmm. Right, how and isn't is that, that how they man? sort of sold it to the the public? Yeah. Is yeah. is hey, it'll be okay because we'll take all the revenue and use it to advance the police state. Yeah, 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 and I think that's that's sort of how um, they worded the regulation in Washington State for the recreational marijuana to make it an easier pill to swallow. Is is they gave all these concessions? It's taxed twenty five percent at each stage of everything. You know, like production, distribution, selling, uh, and all that money is supposed to go basically to law enforcement and all these other things that are state uh, things that are really horrible. Um, so in that, at that point, it becomes a do, do, do I support the state by buying pot through their state pot initiative or do I still buy it uh, 
you know, on the black market. It's a uh, it's a no win situation. And if yeah. I were a marijuana smoker, I'd probably do it through the legal means because I don't want to go to jail for something stupid that's not a crime. Mm-hmm. I hate yeah. to say it. Yeah. I guess I'm well, not a good anarchist because I obey laws when I can. Yeah. I guess the key, though, the good thing about pot is you could grow it yourself and I think still be within regulations. Uh, and they used to bust you by uh, looking at your electrical bill and if it was like five uh-huh. times what it should be for a residence, they'd bust you. But now with LED grow lights, that's not really an issue, especially if you're not mm-hmm. growing fields of it in your basement. Right, right, right. Yeah, man. Um <laughs> did you see on facebook even tommy chong uh gets that aspect of it there was a quote from tommy chong i saw as a meme floating around on facebook where he says uh yeah of course pot should be legal but uh but as far as taxing it taxes just go to this black hole called the government what just all you have to do is decriminalize it that's it just stop enforcing laws about it and uh, yeah. I was impressed. I was impressed that even Tommy Chong gets something like that. Yeah, Squirrel Master. So the Squirrel Master got it. So, uh, well, I guess we're preaching to the choir here, but um, but yeah, man, pot's good. Leftyism uh, can be not as good as understanding that owning stuff is proper and, in fact, integral to any kind of free conceptualization of society and if you doubt me and you're a lefty anarchist listening to this um the best book i would say to read on this so you can sort of envision why property is not theft and why private property ownership actually accounts for all of the problems that the state or any kind of lefty organization or conceptualization Wait, what what is the problem i the, missed the, the first thing you said Oh, okay, okay. So I was going to pitch a book that I read that sort of helps explain I thought you said way. Prop- I thought you said property is the problem. That's what no, I heard. No, but some, some people think it is. Ah, okay. Some, some, the, some people think that property is the problem. There's a book that explains that private property ownership actually uh, prevents the problems that lefties say it causes. Um, it's called um, Boundaries of Order by Butler Schaefer, and I've pitched uh, it before, yep. and it's in my video, I Own Me. And um, it's basically an explanation of how uh, so- a society that was based on property ownership could function um, and the fact that uh, that if, if we all own property, the inherent thing is we're all – we're all the owner of that property, so it's inviolate. We make the final decision on that. So any decision made on, on anything you own is uncontested because I own it. So so it, it, it reduces this problem. You don't have the problem of the commons if everything is owned because anybody making a decision about something owns it. So who cares what he does with it? Yep. What does freedom mean? Tune in to LRN.FM to find out. LRN.FM is the Liberty Radio Network. A collection of live talk radio and podcasts, all coming from a principled pro-liberty perspective. LRN.FM show hosts aren't left, right, or conspiracy kooks. You can tune in 24-7 to LRN.FM via your phone, computer, satellite, and more. Listen free anytime at LRN.FM. That's LRN.FM. Love the fiends and want to help out? We do take donations and we put them back into our Liberty Projects. You can make a donation by clicking on the spinning coin on any post. But what if you want to help but you ain't got no cash? Or you made a donation and you want to help more? Here's how you can help. Download and seed our torrents to help keep us drone-proof. There's a torrent club link at the top of freedomfiends.com. You can also blog the fiends and share episode links on Facebook, Twitter, and elsewhere. You can rate and review our movies on Amazon. Amazon and IMDb, you can rate and review the Freedom Fiends and Anarchy Gumbo and our songs on iTunes. That really helps a lot. You can buy our movies and share them with friends or give them out as gifts. And one of the best ways to spread liberty is to buy a bunch of Freedom Fiends buttons and give them out as gifts. Wholesale prices are available, and you can also comment on our site or better yet, comment about us on other sites. And please email the site link to all your friends. Thanks for helping spread the Fiends message worldwide to as many Liberty people as you can, especially to those who don't yet get it. You rock. You know, you said something previously uh, in a previous cast about you were half joking about that they wouldn't allow De- – the feds wouldn't allow Denver to uh, – or Colorado to continue with their legal pot thing because 
of the fiscal cliff and they need to keep pot illegal as jobs for law enforcement officers. And I was thinking, <laughs> you know, that is kind of, a, I mean, that's kind of the theory. Like we need cops to provide jobs for cops. Uh -huh. Really having a force of people, you know, cops and especially drug cops in particular, like DEA kind of things. Basically what you're saying is we should have a bunch of people whose job is to go around and beat up old ladies at random. That's just mm -hmm. as ethical as busting drug users. And yep. I really think people should use that analogy to argue with status and get up in their face when they say drugs should be illegal, should be legal. And it's kind of a straw man because it's kind of saying, well, if you believe this, you must also believe this and then fighting that other thing. But it's really not a straw man. It's just a matter of degrees. You know, and yep. old ladies do get beat up. I mean, there was a lady who, an old lady I read about who like woke up one day and there was somebody with a chainsaw sawing through her front door and then they came in and roughed her up. I mean, wow. that, and, and it was a, they were looking for her neighbor, you know, or her son that mm -hmm. used to live there or something. They had a warrant yep. and it wasn't her. It was no drugs in the house. That happens all the time. People get the wrong house gets kicked in or, you know, the grandson staying with the grandma and they kick in and they mess with the grandma or beat up the grandma. I mean, there's video on YouTube of during uh, Hurricane Katrina when they're going door-to-door -door collecting guns of an old lady getting knocked to the ground and pepper sprayed by the police and National Guard because she didn't want to mm -hmm. give up her little revolver that wow. she had for self-defense. So cops basically, if you think that there needs to be cops for things, you, you're advocating that we have a force of people whose job is to go around and randomly beat up old ladies, and that's not really a stretch. <laughs> so use that term with people. Well, yeah, but I think the problem is people like that don't get consistency of principles in the first place and that's the problem right is they don't they don't understand the concept of how it's just a matter of degrees because that's not part of their brain structure apparently um they they don't get how it's the same because they don't get that yes it's it's just a matter of um uh, aggression is aggression uh and, and so who's doing it doesn't matter as long as aggression exists it's that's the problem so uh, somebody stealing your money through taxes to build a road is the same principle as somebody stealing your taxes to murder somebody it's still somebody stealing your taxes they don't get that it's or, the same principle. or beating up old ladies at random or beating up old ladies at random they, they just don't get that that consistency yeah so that would be yep. that would be the problem i would try to address and i don't know how to do it <laughs> <laughs> i'm putting this in the show notes if you like cops why not pay a bunch of people to go around randomly beating up old ladies <laughs> So we got a few other things uh, left here. One is we were talking about, I was I was adamant several episodes ago about why, you know, let's talk about something I'm adamant about. I was adamant about that people should not use or that I wouldn't use the Google-based Android computer that doesn't have a hard drive and stores all your stuff on the cloud uh -huh. uh, for two reasons. One is because that's giving your information to the government, basically, and other people, you know, Google, whoever they sell it to. Uh, and you're not going to always have access to it. And Google's cloud-based computing system went down for a day recently on several continents. So, you know, if you had that report due or you really wanted to whack off and you needed your porn or you really, whatever you wanted, that's yours, that's on your computer. If you had that mm -hmm. Google-based computing system, the cheap, like, oh, it's a really light laptop. It, it doesn't cost much money and you don't have to deal with the problems of a hard drive. You know, you couldn't get your stuff for 24 hours. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, man, but um, I guess it exists because Google felt that somebody would buy it. And because so people are stupid. If, if you're stupid enough to buy it, that's your own deal. And if you've got an argument for why you should buy it, spend your money. See if you like it. I don't know. Yep. I, I, see, I definitely see the problems you're talking about, but um, you know, it must be good for somebody. Otherwise, Google wouldn't sell it. And if it isn't and, and suffers from all these horrible problems, then eventually people will stop buying it. And and that's why it's a beautiful thing, the market, isn't it? Because if, if something is that problematic, it'll either be fixed and people will continue to buy it or it won't be sold anymore. And then the problem fixes itself. See, that's the invisible hand, leftist. It, it's as simple as that. Uh, it's, it's not any magic or any faith. It's just that if people want to pay for something, they will. And if something sucks and nobody will want to pay for it, they won't unless there's a thing called the state that forces people to pay for things. There's something I'd love you to read that's in the um, in the chat room. It's the, my last two posts in there. It's a quote from Hermann Göring, one of Hitler's right-hand men who was just following orders. That's what he said when he was tried at Nuremberg. 
Uh, and I was trying to remember this quote or find this quote in the last episode, and somebody said, oh, this is the one you're talking about, and sent it to me. So go ahead and read that. All right. This is the quote. Naturally, the common people don't want war, neither in Russia, nor in England, nor in America, nor in Germany. That is understood. But after all, it is the leaders of the country who determine policy, and it is always a simpler matter to drag the people along, whether it's a democracy or a fascist dictatorship or a parliament or a communist dictatorship. Read the next one. It continues. I couldn't fit it all in. Is this also from the same person? Voice or no voice? Yes. Voice or no voice, the people can always be brought to the bidding of the leaders. That is easy. All you have to do is tell them they are being attacked and denounce the pacifist for lack of patriotism and exposing the country to danger. It works the same in any country. Hermann Gehring. Yeah. And uh, that last part there about denouncing people who denounce war is mm -hmm. still in effect in America in a really strong way. You know, oh, yeah. if you say... The military industrial complex is horrible and we don't need all these troops over. The I mean, even if you don't say we need to get rid of the military and the government, if you just say, you know, we don't need the troops over there in those Middle East country, which some troops actually say, like people who've actually been there, you know, a lot of people join the army and they're all gung ho about it or the Marines. And we have more than our fair share of fiend fans who are libertarians or anarchists who are either active military or vets. Once you've been in war, been in combat, you really look at the whole thing differently. And mm -hmm. uh, history is repeating itself, as someone said in the chat room. You know, I mean, if you go out and and protest the war, the ongoing, never-ending war we're in now in any way, people will say you're not patriotic. They'll say that you're exposing mm -hmm. the country to danger. It works the same in any country. Like the Nazis said, you know, 60 years ago, they had it right. And they had, I mean, really, the Nazis, I hate everything they ever did. But from a state point of view, they really had it down. I mean, they, they, they had oppression down. And that's why they're used as an example, like, oh, mm -hmm. George Bush is acting like Hitler, you know, or Obama's like Hitler. People say that all the time. And it's, it's considered specious, but it's really not. It's a matter of degrees. Yep. Yep. That's a good point. Um, yeah. And, and Murray Rothbard in Anatomy of a State had a section about this where he says, um, the state has advanced to the point where it, people conflate themselves or the country that the state is controlling with the state itself. So if the state is attacked, they think it's an attack on them. Um, yeah. When in reality, you have to view those two things as separate. We are not the state. We are not the government. Uh, they are a parasite on us. And if somebody's attacking them, good. <laughs> it's like if somebody was trying to remove a tick from your neck, let the tick be removed. Yeah, and I did a blog post about that recently. I'm going to end with reading this, uh, and then we can go to the outro. It's very short, and it's kind of hyperbole. I mean, I'm basically saying something scientific that has happened, and I know it hasn't happened scientifically, and it's kind of pseudoscience. Uh, but it's a blog post I did that says, Humans have split into two subspecies, Homo sapiens parasitis and Homo sapiens libertatis. Homo sapiens has evolved, devolved into two distinct subspecies. Homo sapiens libertatis, how would you say that? Libertas? Yeah, libertas and Homo sapiens parasitis. Homo sapiens parasitis wants to rule or be ruled, and for them, central planning is innately normal, even though it will eventually cause their extinction. Homo sapiens libertas are humans who want no czars, kings, presidents, representatives, mayors, NGOs, think tanks, or other violent vermin centrally planning their every move. And because of that, Homo sapiens libertas will be the victor without firing a shot. Evolution's natural selection will take care of it. Ben ah, Stone, if, ben Stone oh, says, Ben Stone says, True libertarians are not made, they are born. They just realize what they are the first time they hear someone explain the basic ideas. To which I'd add, whereas the parasitic subspecies will always defend the state, like they're defending their mother. <laughs> and this actually t came out of a comment I posted to a comment that uh, Mark Schisler posted um, on our episode about that movie um, about the hippies and how they failed uh -huh. uh, because of central planning. And he said, you know, something about central planning. And I posted this as a remark. And then actually he was like, wow, that's great. I never thought of it that way. And I extrapolated this. I actually spent about an hour working on this. And mm -hmm. I really was busy and I was like feeling like, man, I need to spend some money today. I need to make some money today and I need to work on some money projects. And then I was like, oh, 
No, Mark donated 20 bucks yesterday so I can sit here for an hour and work on this because the fiend's got 20 bucks. So uh, Mark paid me in Thank advance you, to do that yeah. work. So when you donate to the fiends, you're helping us uh, to, do, to do fiends work, to sit around and write stuff, which is really yeah. funny because I saw something. It was some um, – uh, where do they say Obama's from? The idiots say Obama's not from America. Kenya? Was, Kenya, yeah. There was some Kenyan site where somebody was listing their demands for the Kenyan government to... I couldn't believe how much statism there was on this site. It was all like, this needs to be banned. That needs to be banned. This needs to be uh. enforced. And one of the things they wanted to enforce was that um, employers would be forced to recognize on a job interview if you put Facebooking as one of your job experiences. <laughs> huh. so i guess wow. i kind of am doing that because i'm saying like someone paid us some money and i just sat around writing a blog post for a day but yeah. it was a good blog post and go. i think it did some good horizontal enforcement and or, uh, horizontal Liberate, liberation liberation yeah. and uh you know we don't we do this stuff whether we get paid or not but when people give us money we tend to want to do it more it seems like yes. so yeah of course. keep giving <laughs> and you know we got a, like 100 bucks in donations this week from about 5 people total and that's more than we've ever gotten in a week and it was immediately spent on buttons and money i was already owed but uh by the fiends that we've lost but uh you know i think that i need to rant more about how eh, i feel like stopping this when we never get any money <laughs> i did that like a week ago and all of a sudden we got these donations so i kind of distilled Don't, that in, into something uh, yeah. else which was this christmas thing which is more fun there you go that's more fun and productive yeah so uh you got any closing arguments before you want to play the outro um no, no, I think your your homo parasitist stuff sums it up, and yeah, it is kind of tongue in cheek and and funny, but um, that's the main difference, right? That's what we need to be explaining to people is the difference uh, in our philosophy and others is that uh, we don't see any need for anybody to rule others. There's no, there's no reason, no legitimate reason for you to be forced to comply with somebody else's will uh, at all, ever. Um, you can do it voluntarily like if you have a boss and a job because at any time you can quit that job and you can choose not to follow your boss's orders and get fired from that job. Uh, but if you are forced to at point of a gun, that's the difference. And those who don't believe that that's a good thing uh, are us and those that think that that's the way the world should work are homo parasitis. And, um, and I think we win in the end, whether it's through genetics like you say <laughs> here or, uh, or, or through, I guess, just evolution. But uh, I think we win in the end. Yes, and um, that was a great place to end, but I'm going to mess it up by saying uh, Mark points out that he gave $50, not $20, but actually I think it was $50 Canadian. By the time we got it through PayPal, I think it was 40 bucks. So. <sighs> damn, damn nations. Damn nations. Damn nation. All right, man, play the outro. The Bad Quaker staff has discovered how easy it is to get everything you need for the holidays at Amazon. Everything from the coolest decorations to hangover remedies, and everything from the latest movies and music to poop stain remover. If you follow the Amazon link at badquaker.com, Amazon will give badquaker.com a tiny portion of the purchase. It won't cost you any extra, but you will be supporting this podcast. Thank you. Want to contribute to Liberty but short on cash? You can help the Freedom Fiends without even spending a post-1964 dime. Download uTorrent and start seeding Fiends episodes and DVDs to help keep us drone-proof. There's a Torrent Club link at the top of FreedomFiends.com. There you'll find our Torrent RSS feed and instructions to grab past episodes and automatically download new ones, even while you're away from the computer. You'll also get special episodes of The Fiends and Anarchy Gumbo days or even weeks before regular podcast subscribers who aren't torrenting. Leave your computer on, seeding the torrents while you're at work or asleep. The more people seeding The Fiends, the more drone-proof we'll be when the boot comes down. We're not saying the Freedom Fiends are the one true path to anarchist liberation, but it's a good one. If you want to put your voluntarist money where your mouth is, consider making a donation to the Freedom Fiends. Go to freedomfiends.com and click on the spinning coin on any post. Then make a one-time gift via PayPal, or set up a monthly contribution of as little as $3. Giving to the Freedom Fiends helps advance education of horizontal liberation throughout the world. The Freedom Fiends. We work hard, so send us some money. 
Thank you for listening to the Freedom Fiends Agenda. We'll be back streaming live every Thursday from 4 to 6 p.m. East Coast, U.S. time on Freedom Fiends Radio at freedomfiends.com. MP3 archives of all Freedom Fiends episodes are available free at freedomfiends.com. That's F-R-E-E-D-O-M-F-E-E-N-S dot com. Worms!